Okay, hello and welcome. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm doing pretty good. Oh, I did have to get up earlier this morning, so I guess we'll see whether I can uh, continue along for four hours or not. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yes, so I was thinking tonight that we were going to start with Curse of the Azure Bonds, which is a sequel to Pool of Radiance. Uh, we previously played through Pool of Radiance back in April of last year. Um, so it's been a while since I've uh, done one of these games. It is weird to think that that's been more than a year since then. Um, part of this is because, you know, these are big RPGs and they're kind of a large commitment for me. Um, I guess I feel about ready to uh, play through another one of these. Uh, it should be easier to play through this than it was in Pool of Radiance because it's not the first game that the uh, SSI ever made with, you know, this engine, the uh, the C CRPG engine. Am I getting ahead of myself here? Perhaps I should explain a bit what this is. Curse of the Azure Bonds is the sequel to Pool of Radiance. These are early CRPGs or uh, Dungeons and Dragons style computer role-playing games where you have a party of players and you go around uh, in turn-based combat and uh, you have to defeat enemies and monsters and explore and, you know, find loot and all that. Um, but yes, as I said, Pool of Radiance had, because it was the first one, it had some things in it which just... It wasn't unplayable, but there were changes to the game which could be made, which would have been nice key among these is the game remembering what spells you wanted to memorize whenever you rested. I had to put them in manually every single time I rested. I believe that is fixed in Curse of the Azure Bonds, or it's changed rather in Curse of the Azure Bonds, so it actually remembers what spells you had memorized, which is quite nice. Uh, there's probably some other things as well. Also I would assume it's improved graphics. Don't expect too much better, but uh, I think there's a bit more color depth to it than there was before. <clears throat> uh, as a recap, Pool of Radiance saw our party of six people? Yeah. Uh, let's see if I can remember the names. There was Balagar the Dwarf. He was a fighter. There was Irala, I think probably a human fighter. Uh, there was Scampers, our halfling thief. Uh, there was Volkmar, our cleric, our human male cleric. There was Egrim, a Elven mage? He might also have been a human mage. I can't remember. And there's also Elspeth, another mage. So, yes, a bunch of them named after characters from Warhammer because <laughs> that's what I could come up with at the moment. Um, and we're going to be continuing the plot of them. Uh, from Pool of Radiance, they had banded together and gone to visit the town of Flan, or New Flan, which was a small part of a previously destroyed and taken over by evil town uh, called Flan, I believe, uh, which had been reclaimed by the forces of good. And it was our job, or rather there was proclamations set up for any adventuring uh, bands of, you know, adventurers to uh, clear out the rest of the town, clear out the rest of the ruins of the city and also deal with some big bad evil, which was rumored to be in the area. I believe it ended up with us defeating a dragon, which had tied itself with this pool of radiance. Some kind of well of arcane power or something like that, from what I vaguely remember. Um, so yes, as well as defeating a lot of kobolds and rescuing people from bandits. I remember that as well. And also looting the, ru looting the lair of some wyverns. Uh... So yes, Curse of the Azure Bonds, I don't really know what it involves. Uh, I had played a bit of Pool of Radiance before I'd done the stream of it. Maybe about a quarter of the game beforehand, but from this point on, it's uh, completely blind. So I have no foreknowledge of it at all. Uh, let's see. We actually do have some... Uh introductory text which I'll read at least the first journal entry for it because it will give us a bit of uh backstory as to what's going on uh can I bring this up uh I will want to go to 
Yeah, this one. Okay. And I go there, Adventurous Journal, and bring that up. There we go. So, we're going to be referring to uh, PDFs a lot in this run because, like Pool of Radiance, uh, these games are so primitive that they can't have most of the dialogue and uh, information we require in game. So, I'm going to be referring to PDFs and I'm going to have to be writing things down in a notepad because it doesn't have an in-game journal for me to uh, keep track of stuff. So, you know, this is really old school. Even before my time, which that sounds like I'm older than I actually am. That's not true, but... <laughs> uh, these games were, you know... When did this one come out, Curse of the Azure Bonds? I think Pool of Radiance came out in, like, 90? 90? 90? of radiance 1988 so i guess in the sequel was actually made pretty quickly after this one uh sequels let's see curse of the outer bonds 1989 there we go so yes that is uh <laughs> very early into my life i was in no state to start playing video games anyway introduction or what are we doing in tilverton anyway we see a map over there on the right. Uh, as a recap, uh, as I said, you can see Flan all the way up there in the top right, which is where the last game took place, as well as along the coastline and a bit further north from Flan, uh, sort of into some mountains which were up there. Can I gesture? Yep. Yeah. Sort of up here, and we went along the coastline over here. I don't think we actually went to Zentil Keep. Uh, but we're sort of going to flan along around here and the overworld map. This game does actually have an overworld map. I'm assuming because the Azure Bonds has one as well. Uh, went around like this area and flan itself was quite a large location with multiple areas. Let's uh, read this journal entry though. <clears throat> journal entry one. I am beginning a new journal. My old journal is gone along with all of the party's equipment. I write here to try to make some sense out of our spotty memories. We had all agreed to come south to Tilverton to seek the lost princess, Nicasia of Cormia. Tilverton is on the border between the Dale Lands and Cormia, and was the last place the princess had been spotted. Tilverton on the map, you can see, is in the bottom left. <clears throat> I don't actually know these places at all. This area is uh, one which was never visited in the Border Skate series, which I have the most experience with. Uh, though I do know these areas, Cormia is, um, isn't that the Desert Kingdoms that visited in some of the uh, Drizzt books? Dale Lands, I think is just a general description of areas south of Icewind Dale? I'm not too sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, Again, as a reference, like, Baldur's Gate takes place about over here. You can imagine a coastline running along here. And uh, there's, like, Baldur's Gate, and then there's Arm about south, a bit, a bit further south of it, uh, past some mountains, which, uh, what's it called? Uh, Nashville is, a uh, is it Nashville? Is, uh, located around near the mountains. And then further north, you have Icewind Dale. I'm not doing this map to scale. <laughs> Uh, you know, further north up here is Icewind Dale, and, uh, is where the Icewind Dale series take place of, as you can assume. This is going back a ways. Yes, it is, rather. I do, I, I am rather, uh, determined to finish all these games, because I do enjoy them. Uh, they're primitive, but I still find them quite enjoyable. Um, as long as they're not overly rude. Sometimes these games have very mean uh combat sections in them <laughs> again i'm getting ahead of myself let's just uh read the rest of this rumor was that king anzone's youngest daughter the princess nakasia ran away from the royal household of cormia almost a year ago she fled an arranged marriage and ran off with a cleric from tilverton named gary of gond the last word was that nakasia and gary had a falling out and that she was seen near tilverton recently the king had a large reward out for Nakashia's return. A smart group of adventurers like ourselves could make some powerful friends if they found the princess and returned her to the king. Somewhere along the road to Tilverton, we were attacked. 
The brigands must have been invisible, because some of our party went down before we knew what was going on. I vaguely remember dark faces and evil-looking helmets firing crossbows into our midst. The, crossbows hit, the crossbow hits were not fatal, but every hit seemed to drop its target. I remember getting hit in the arm. The wound blazed like fire. My head swam. Just before I blacked out, I thought that this was a bad end for such experienced adventurers. Yeah, certainly a group which had uh, dealt with a dragon and multiple <laughs> variants of undead and just untold numbers of kobolds, goblins, orcs, and so on. Uh, now we awake in Tilverton with our wounds healed. Our equipment is gone, but we have found a stash of coins. One of our first priorities must be to buy new equipment. Oh, that's a pity. It sounds like we had such a huge amount of money left over from uh, the first game. <laughs> nope, gotta get it all back again. I overheard a servant mention the date, but I'm not sure I believe it. If the servant speaks true, it is almost a month since the ambush. Almost anything could have happened at that time. It seems that almost anything we did. It seems that almost anything did. Each of us awoke with five azure blue symbols imprinted on our sword arm. The symbols are not tattoos. They seem to exist below the skin. They occasionally feel like moving. Feel like they're moving. I believe these are the symbols here. We've got a hand with a fanged mouth on it. Some kind of symbol there. Like a ring with some other things. I could zoom in a bit, but uh, just kind of going to get a bit blurry. Some other symbol there, and a triangle with a Z in it. Has that got something to do with Zentil Keep? Those guys are always up to no good. It's just a fortress dedicated to bad guys. <laughs> Not to choose that exists below. Not to choose that exists below the skin. I mean, like to choose. Yeah, that is rather true. Because it's like ink which goes into the skin. Anyway. Hello, welcome, welcome. We have devised a plan of attack. Our spellcasters will prepare their spells. We will purchase some new arms and armor. Then we will go out into Tilverton and find out what is going on. Someone must know. And I don't care if we have to rouse every, rouse every sage, priest, and bartender in this town to find out. There are some random printed notes I have... These, uh, <clears throat> these are some random printed notes I have collected. The information may be important on our journey. My journal note continues on page 10. So yes, uh, what's this? There's a bunch of Dale and geographic references here. The area shown in the map stretches from Tilverton in the southwest to Flan in the northeast. It includes the center of the Elven Court. I assume in this forest here. Recognize the name Mithdrana there. Uh, the western shores of the Moon Sea. And several of the Dales surrounding the Elven Court. The area is sparsely populated. I guess this is the Dales. Dale lands and not Icewind Dale up there. I am not really that knowledgeable on uh, Forgotten Realms setting. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me. I get things wrong. There's major concentrations in the cities and towns and farms covering the intervening dales. Each location on the map is described below. Cormia is a large civilized nation to the south and west of the Dale lands. The forces of Cormia have extended their northern borders by annexing the city of Tilverton. Cormia has no known plans to continue its expansion towards the Dale lands. Dagger Falls. Is a farming community on the River Tesh and the largest settlement in Daggerdale, and also has nothing, re no, no revelation to uh, the Elder Scrolls to Daggerfall. The inhabitants of Dagger Falls dislike outsiders of any kind. They fear the expansion of Zentil Keep may destroy their independence. Uh, so they are over here, and yeah, Zentil Keep is up there. Let me just this over a bit. Sorry. <clears throat> Uh, the Dale lands include the fertile area surrounding the vast elven court. There are many dales around the court, including Shadowdale, Mistledale, Battledale, and Daggerdale. The elven court is a vast forest that was the center of elven civilization in the area north of the Moonsea. When the elves left in the retreat, the elven court was left empty. Without the elves to control them, evil creatures have begun to multiply deep within the forests. Some fear that these creatures will become a threat to the surrounding Dale lands. I know nothing about that. This sounds like... Hell's civilization is declining, as it always is in these types of settings, and, uh, you know, <laughs> they've all gone off somewhere else. Uh, hello, welcome, welcome. What are we doing today? We are doing uh, Curse of the Azure Bonds, which is a old CRPG 
by the company SSI uh, from 1989. So we have previously played the first one, Pool of Radiance, back in April last year. So we are doing the sequel, finally. <laughs> uh, we're reading some back history for this so that I can understand what's going on. Esembra is the training center of Battledale. Where's that located? Yeah, good. I'm going to move the window. <laughs> move the window in OBS. That will uh, scroll the uh, PDF, won't it? Hold on. Uh, Assembia. Assembra is over there. Okay. Uh, it's a training center for Battledale. Battledale has seen many conflicts. Many bitter enemies find it convenient to hold their wars in Battledale rather than risk ravaging their own lands. I can Hence the name. Batterdale has lost some of its former power with the retreat of the Elves. Hills Farm was formerly the major trading centre between the Elves of the Elven Court and the humans of the Moon Sea Reaches. With the retreat of the Elves, Hills Farm has been taken over by a ruthless dictator. He has expanded the Red Plume mercenaries and is engaged in a successful military campaign against Zentil Keep in the ruins of Eulash. Uh, people might actually remember recognize the name Hills Far. Uh, <laughs> um, at least some people who might watch this. Uh, there is another game in this series uh, called Hills Far, and I'm probably not going to play that. Uh, from what I understand, it's sort of a series of mini quests, I believe. It's not part of the uh, sort of, it's not part of the uh, Pool of Radiance series, let's say. Because you have Pool of Radiance, Curse of the Azure Bonds, Secret of the Silver Blades, and I believe Pools of Darkness? Pools of Darkness. Um, and then there's Hills Far, which is uh, a value-added adventure for those who would like to take a side, try side trip while awaiting the sequel, is uh, how they reviewers on Dragon magazine described it. So it's kind of its own thing. Uh, and I... Let's see. It features a combination of real-time action and randomly generated quests. So it's not really, you know... The, the story, it's just sort of extra gameplay if you were wanting it while waiting for the sequel. Crazy how much world building went into Forgotten Realms, isn't it? It's just, there's so much lore behind all this. And this is all the earlier editions as well. Like, like I, I, I believe a lot of this stuff has changed into more recent ones. But if it's outside of, like, these video games and Baldur's Gate, then I have no knowledge of it. So... <laughs> this is do not replicate blue as a part of the copy protection um maybe i'm not too sure um i know there is copy protection but you know because this is bought from gog uh, that should be cracked so we don't have to actually have to actually put the copy protection in uh let's see blah 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 mistledale mithdrana was a huge ancient city of elves at center of the elven court when the elves left the elven city the city was left deserted blah 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 uh, we've got a bestiary there of all the creatures available to us. We'll have a look at that as we come across them. Won't read all this. Short history of the Dellands in the Elven Court. Yeah. Mm, back when the manuals were, you know, tomes of themselves. I do kind of miss that. And we've got these, uh, for people who are joining, we have these journal entries. I'm going to have to refer to these PDFs quite frequently because all the central information is held within this PDF as well as another one for the manual. Uh, this is the Adventurer's Journal PDF. So, yeah, we've got these journal entries. And these aren't all uh, relevant to the game. To prevent people from spoiling the story if they decided to read through the entire journal early on, which you shouldn't do, uh, there is actually false entries. So, you know, you might stop and have a look at some of this stuff and it's like, aha, there's stuff which I know, which, which I'm going to be able to plan ahead for because I saw it in the journal. Nope, it might actually be false. So, there's a lot, <laughs> there's quite a lot of it. Now, uh, we'll just glance over that. And there's also Tavern Tales at the end there, which are just, like, what's it called? Stories which you can hear in taverns. If we want to go into a tavern, it depends whether they've changed the, uh, go into a tavern, have a drink, and a brawl breaks out, and you get attacked by, like, 15 rogues and get slaughtered. That was annoying in the original. Anyway, okay, let's see. About 20 minutes into the broadcast, let's actually start with the game. Curse of the Azure Bonds. 10,000 users. Make sure NumBlock is on. 
Okay. Loading. Strategic Simulations Incorporated presents an official Adventure Dungeons & Dragons computer product. 1989. Curse of the Azure Bonds. Oh, we actually get a sound effect there at the beginning. I don't think that was present in the uh, Pool of Radiance. Volume 2. Based on the novel Azure Bonds by Kate Novak and Jeff Grubb. Huh, there actually was a novel based on this. I give it a read at some point, if I could find it. Play! Now, I have imported the characters. Ah, here's a copy production. Align the Esperar and Deathek runes shown below on a translation wheel like this. Type the characters in box number two under the whatever path. Uh, the uh, dot, dotted line path. Ah, uh, yes, these games use uh, copy protection code wheels. So there is actually a uh, generator for that available with GOG, but you don't have to fill it out. Uh, let me show that off because, you know, it's got a handy dandy little, uh, uh, what's it called? Handy dandy little uh, program to emulate that since I don't have the physical feelies. Uh, yep, yeah, there we go. So that's what it looks like. Just a whole bunch of symbols and so on. Uh, and I think we have to press the uh, right ones. Let's see. Esbruar and Deathek runes. So Esbruar rune is this one. And Deathek rune is this one. And we follow the... Is that a dashed line or a dotted line? I... Hmm... Are those dashes or dots? Um, I'll put in looter. I think it's looter. Those look more da like dashes to me than dots. So I'm going to guess it's looter. Type character. Type the character in box number two. Oh, hold on. I read that wrong. Dup and dup. Uh, but T. I guess it's very convoluted. It would work regardless of what I put in. So you know, you just get a feel of what it's like. Okay, we could create a new car party, but we're going to be uh, using the characters from the previous game because we want to continue the storyline of them. Um, I have gone ahead and already, or, or, and uh, previously, on my own, uh, imported the characters from Pool of Radiance. I wonder whether I should go over that, how, it's supposed to, how you're supposed to import the characters, because you don't think that was right? Yeah, probably not. <laughs> um, I wonder whether I should go over how to import the characters, uh, because it was, there was a little step to it, which I was getting a bit confused about. You missed Pool of Radiance. Ah, yes. <laughs> You're about a year late. It's available on uh, my YouTube channel to watch. If for some reason people want to watch like 21 episodes. <laughs> uh, we'll see whether this one takes as long. I don't actually know. Uh, da, da, da. Do I want to load up Pool of Radiance quickly to show off how to do this? Uh, it's just one thing. I'm going to do this because I appreciate uh, people stepping me through things. So... It was uh, mostly this being... There's a little thing which I got a bit confused about, so... I am going to uh, go over this, even if it means it takes a little bit longer. Uh, let's see... Pool of Radiance. There we go. So I'll load up Pool of Radiance. Good poor copy protection. Even if you bought the game, you can't figure out the code. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, Pool of Radiance, and this is what it looks like in that, which I think is actually a bit clearer. Anyway, blah. We'll load the save game, and I'm guessing it's save A for the most recent one. Okay, so here we go. Now, you can see our party here, and they have all of their items. Uh, so what you have to do to be able to uh, export your characters is... Uh, you have to go into one of these training rooms. Now, 
I'm being I'm I'm going through this because the guides for exporting characters say that you have to remove the party members from your party. And if you go to encamp, uh you can press alter and you have an option to drop party members here. Uh Genhiris here is just a NPC from the game. Uh they're not an actual part of our party, so they're not getting exported. Certainly not with an AC of nine and a HP of twenty-two. That that's actually higher than Elspeth's. Um, but if you drop the character here, it says Gehent Gen Genhiris will be gone. Uh, you don't want to do that. Because that's not actually the goal here is to get a export file of the character. And the game creates that when you uh, remove them from the party. But you don't do it through the rest menu or the camp menu like that. What you have to do is you have to go into one of these rooms here. Uh, one of the training rooms. And you say, uh, yes, I want to train. And you go down. You see down in the menu down, the below, down below. Uh, you have the option to remove character from party by pressing R. So I press that on uh Erala there and it removed the character from the party i do it with belagar volkmar scampers a grim elspeth i've done this previously and this creates a character file in the pool of radiance installation folder which if you purchase for gog should be under gog games pool of radiance uh and i think you have to look in the cloud saves folder under pool rad and you'll have files called character name dot c h a or the char file character file and you'll need to copy those character files over to the folder for curse of the azure bonds and which folder do you put those in well let me, i just have to remind myself i think you put them into the curse of the azure bonds forward slash cloud saves forward slash saves folder save folder and uh so that's what you have to do and then you go into curse of the azure bonds we'll load it up again <clears throat> as i said i've previously done this but okay play whatever uh, and if we add characters to party, add from where? It will say from pool, which is pool of radiance. You can also import from hills far, as well as uh, curse. Apparently, you can import the characters from this game. Uh, we'll say pool for pool, and it will list the. It should list the uh, characters from pool of radiance. So we'll say, I want to add Balagar. Then I'll add Irala. Then I'll add Volkmar. Then I'll add Scampers, then Egrim, and then Elspeth. The order which I added them determines the order which they're listed in the uh, party list up. You can change that later, but, you know, uh, just in case there's like combat right at the beginning of the game and you don't have time to uh, organize your party order, you have them listed in the proper order so that, you know, your fighters are at the top of the list, spellcasters are at the back. And then we can begin adventuring. You awaken in a small room. Looking around, you notice that all your gear is gone, as is your memory of recent events. Adding to your disquiet, you notice that your sword arm has been somehow imprinted with strange patterns. The rest of your party are identically marked. They're actually moving. I would be pretty afraid if I had a fanged ma- fanged- mouthed hand on my arm and there we go okay uh first thing first we're going to encamp we set up our tent and a fire in this room we'll save i'll save under a we will not quit to dos and i am going to load up uh uh let's see where is it i have windows all over the place i need to cull a bunch of them that was too many of them. <laughs> Hold up. Uh, open file location. There we go. Okay. Uh, oop. Hold up. No. Bring back that. There we go. 
Uh, I'm going to open up Gold Box Companion, which is a program I use, which uh, makes it a bit nicer and easier for people to follow. So, load up save game A, and there we go. Okay, so you'll be able to see our... Uh, what's it called? Status bar of our party members up the top, and also a map on the right. Uh, this is an external program I'm using, which adds some extra features so that you're not just going off the stats on the uh, screen here. Uh, you have a bar. I can't mouse over it because it brings up a menu, but you have a bar of all the characters' stats and uh, what they look like up the top there. Oh, we have Balagard, the Dwarf, Irala. Bogmar, Scampers, Egrim, and Elspeth, as well as a map on the right, as I said, which uh, I find very helpful because this game is first-person dungeon crawling, moving by squares, and I can find I find that rather disorientating to watch someone play it personally, because I don't have the inputs to guide where they're going. So the map helps to understand where I'm going and what I'm doing. Uh, though the map does make this quite a bit easier because, you know, I don't have to use grid paper to map it out myself. <laughs> some would say it's a convenience. I agree. Um, I would also like that experience of mapping out a thing at some point, but uh, I'm not going to do that on stream because it would take too long and I don't think people would appreciate me scratching at a piece of paper with a pencil trying to map out the entire area. Anyway, uh, well, let's see... Okay, so let's have a look at our characters. Uh, we'll press V for view. Balagar, male dwarf, age 60. Lawful neutral, fighter. Strength is 18 with 90. Platinum is 300. That's a fair bit of money we have. Money is divided into different uh, very, into different denominations. It goes copper. 100 copper equals 1 silver. 100 silver equals 1 gold. 100 gold equals 1 platinum. So we have... A lot of gold. <laughs> I'm not going to do the math. I can't be bothered. Uh, intelligence 13, wisdom 11, dexterity 16, constitution 16, char charisma is 12. And we have no items. He has an AC of 8, HP of 80, Thacko of 11. I have to explain this. Thacko is how D&D &D used to do uh, armor classes. Uh, Thacko stands for two hit armor class zero. I'm not going to explain how that works, because I have forgotten. <laughs> it's not as complicated as it sounds. The basics of it is, the lower your AC, which goes into negatives, the better it is. AC 8 is about normal AC for an unarmored person. Uh, with heavy armor, it could be 0. With magical armor, it could be something like minus 4. Essentially, the lower your armor class is, it puts a penalty on the to hit chance for an enemy hitting that character. So, they may roll, say a 12, and if you have an AC of 0, then they have to roll uh, like higher than your AC to hit you? This is where I get a bit confused. <laughs> um, 10 is normal, 8 is some perk supplies. Okay, thank you very much. I'm glad we have some people in chat who know 2nd uh, edition. <laughs> Second edition was your favourite, it's not difficult at all. I do think Thacko is sort of hyped up a bit as being some kind of, I don't know, labyrinthine thing. It's not really, I do have difficulty understanding it, mostly because it... The process of getting to the... The process of getting to the answer isn't complicated. Um, It's more the sort of equation you need to remember, which I have a problem. Because I'm bad at math, and whether it's going, whether it goes one way or the other, I get confused. So I'm very used to it because Baldur's Gate was like that. So lower AC is better. That's easy to understand. Um, there's another stat here which I don't actually know. Okay, so Balagar's Thacko is eleven, which is to hit an armor class of zero which is to hit an enemy with an armor class of zero, he needs to roll an 11 on a 20-sided die. I believe that's 11 to 20. A 20 is always a hit. Uh, might be even a critical hit. Uh, but he has to roll a 11 to be able to hit armor class zero, which is pretty good. Um, if that enemy had an armor class of minus two, I believe Belagar would have to roll a 13 or higher to be able to hit that person. Um... 
if they had another class of four, he would have to roll uh, a seven or higher on a 20-sided die to be able to hit them. Because their armor class is actually working, they're, they're low, they're, you know, their AC of four is actually working against them and is making it easier to hit them. Um, so. 18 to 90 strength is pretty sweet. It is. I did re-roll these characters a few times. I wasn't so uh, caught up about their stats that they've got perfect stats. I'm not overly concerned about that. I prefer the character to have some flaw rather than having perfect stats across the line. I think it makes things a bit more interesting. So. A few times, yes. <laughs> I can't remember how many. DMs are going to have to slap me on the wrist for that. But uh, many of the other stats are just how they were. Like, I think I put, like, a ballpark, which I was going to accept for Warrior. It was around 16 constitution, at least. So, you know, that's sort of what I accepted. Uh, but if it was, like, not perfect 18, and I didn't modify the stats afterward or rolls. So... Easy arm. Easy. Armor class is just a modifier you apply to your Thacko to get a number to roll. Yeah, it's not too difficult. It's just a bit more work than, you know, what you'd initially think. Was it straight 3d6 or some sort of mercy rules? I think it... I can't remember. I think it rolls all the stats at once, and then you can modify them afterwards. Just by, like, adding, you know, upping and downing them as you want. Um, but I think I think you can get up to strength 1899 so it's not perfect maximum strength but uh, it's still pretty good I think it's quite lenient on the rolls um, but I didn't abuse that too much <laughs> anyway so that's Balagar nope that was the wrong button okay view there's Arala uh, she has 1800 strength, which I think is 100, so she's actually a bit stronger than Balagar. Female, human, uh, chaotic good, she's a fighter, 300 gold, 13 intelligence, 16 wisdom, dexterity of 14, constitution 16, charisma is 13. Volkmar is our cleric, lawful good cleric, 1800 strength. <laughs> uh, intelligence is 14, wisdom is 18. I think I also made sure that our casters had as high stats as possible which were relevant to them. So Egrim and Elspeth, I believe, both have 18, 18 intelligence. Uh, that is because what spells you can cast is based off your maximum intelligence. So by having lower than 18 intelligence, we would just be gimping ourselves out of spells available. Which, you know, you want to see all the spells in the game, so... They both have superhuman intelligence. Uh, dexterity of 11, constitution of 13, pretty low constitution for a frontliner uh, backup cleric, but, you know, that's how it is. And a charisma of 13. Scampers is our thief. Uh, female halfling, neutral good. Uh, she has 14 strength, 15 intelligence, 12 wisdom, 17 dexterity, 17 constitution, 11 charisma. Egrim uh, has... Male, it's a male, human, lawful neutral, it's a magic user, not a mage. Uh, 18 strength, 18 intelligence, 9 wisdom, dexterity 13, constitution 14, charisma 14. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's just how it was rolled, so he's a very buff mage. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, HP was also something which I didn't worry about too much. I think I sort of got at least like 5 hit points per level but if it wasn't a perfect roll it was fine they don't have as many hit points as they could have for their levels uh, <clears throat> you shouldn't have percentile strength what Irala really <laughs> um, I don't know about that um, that's just what the game did if it was some restriction at the time I don't know uh Let's see, Elspeth, female, human, lawful, neutral, male, magic user, 16 strength, intelligence, 18, wisdom, 14, dexterity, 14, constitution, 13, charisma is 16. They all have 300 platinum. 
So there we go. Okay. We're going to rest. No, we're not. We're going to do mag. We're going to do magic. Memorize. People expecting this to be a fast playthrough are going to be sorely disappointed. These games are quite involved <laughs> and have a fair bit of setup. A lot of time is spent memorizing your spells and uh, plotting things out. So I like that. It's like, you know, a slow paced game. <laughs> I know. <laughs> 40 minutes in and we haven't even started. I shouldn't worry about that. Okay, let's see. What spells do we want to begin with? Detect magic. That will tell us whether we have an item which is magical in our inventories. I think it counts everyone's inventories. I might have to reread the manual about that. Uh, we'll get two magic missiles and we'll get a sleep spell. Sleep might not be too useful because it depends on the level of the enemies we're going to be fighting at the beginning here. <clears throat> Against kobolds, it's fantastic because you can make nine kobolds fall asleep in a three by three square. And they're just easy pickings. They're asleep, you can kill them while they sleep and it's a free hit and kill instant kill so against high level enemies mostly humanoid npcs it's not as useful uh let's see detective visibility mirror image read magic which is used for reading scrolls uh shield and sleep again no hang on i'm reading the wrong thing detective visibility mirror image and stinking cloud i think i memorized a stinking cloud hold on uh, memorize a stinking cloud. You want to memorize a mirror image. It's useful. Uh, that means he gets like copies of him, which he, which has to be hit through before he can get his himself. And we've got third level spells, which is fireball, haste, and lightning bolt. Something I remember in this. I believe haste ages your character every time you cast it on them. So we have to leave haste until moments where we really need it. Because they're essentially living their life faster. I believe it ages them by one year whenever you cast it on them. Exit. Exit. Yes. Egrim. Memorize spells. Uh, he's got four, so we'll do magic missile as well as two sleep spells. He's got knock, rain of enfeeblement, stinking cloud, strength. we will memorize a stinking cloud. They're useful for crowd control. Uh, knock is for opening locked doors. That could be useful. I think locked chests as well. People have been talking. My second edition wizard is a sword wizard. Best plan. <laughs> you mean like a fighter wizard? I never really like the dual classes. I know they're very strong, but I don't know. I always prefer my warriors like wearing full armor, full plate mail. Uh, being a fighter mage, you can't actually do that, I don't think. Or you can't cast spells uh, when you're wearing heavy armor. Only fighters can have percentile strength. It's been a long time. Is that how it works? Specifics will have to be uh, mentioned to me, because, as I said, I my only experience with second edition is through video games and uh, what I've read of the Baldur's Gate manual, which I think I actually have up here. Yes, I do. I might refer to it, because some of the spells are generally similar. It's not a dual class. Players, options, and handbook shenanigans. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like extra classes from other editions, I see. Or from other, uh, you know, ademed of, like, extra uh, booklets. It's a real fireball. Uh, 33 10-foot cube style. Melt all the treasure. The fireballs in this do have neat mechanics to them. They are bigger when you cast them inside. Uh, outside, they are a 3x3 three three diamond, I believe. So if you imagine like a 3x3 three three cube with, uh, you know, the central parts, I think expanding to four. Or it might just be a 3x3 three three outside. And then inside, it's a 5x5. Uh, five five. Like diamond shape, I think. It's certainly bigger inside, just the basics of it, so... You have to be very careful to not hit your own people if it's inside. Percentile strength is a fighter class only thing. Oh, okay. I mean, Arala is a fighter, isn't she? She'd be able to have that. It's not restricted to, uh... 
to race, then, is it? Uh, let's see, Ray with Enfeeblement. I mean, that's only one person, so it's not really that useful. Strength? Frontline already have good strength. We're going to put Stinking Cloud, and we're going to put Fireball, and that's all that you have, so we'll get another Fireball. There we go. Yep. Volkmar. Memorize your spells. Right. Let's see. Uh, we'll get Bless. I'll get two Blesses. Do we need protection from evil? I don't know. We're probably not going to go immediately up against, like, level drainers. He can get Detect Magic. Cure Life Wounds. Uh, Find Traps, no. Hold Person. That could be useful. Resist Fire, Silence, 15 foot radius. Slow Poison. We'll get a Slow Poison or two. Uh, Spiritual Hammer is... I wonder whether that's changed. I think in Pool of Radiance it was only a melee attack, whereas I think you're supposed to be able to throw it. Get some hold persons. Snake Charm is very specific. <laughs> Maybe a resist fire. Cure blindness, cause blindness, cure disease, cause disease. Get some cure disease. Uh, and prayer. I think... Yeah, that should be good. I think that some of these spells are new. Exit. Oh, there we go. Memorize these spells. Yep, okay. Then we will uh, rest. Rest for 12 hours. Memorize all of our spells. <clears throat> and there we go. doing night blue with two mages a cleric and a paladin not exactly the classic party build i feel like having non-normal party builds makes things a fair bit more interesting than just going kind of like how i've gone you know two fighters a cleric a thief a maid and two mages you are kind of forced into that because it gives you the utility and the games kind of expect you to have a balanced party like that can't really do the game as like just a party of thieves <laughs> You're just going to be, you know, not being able to wear heavy armor and all that, so. Okay, and we'll save. And we'll save under B. No, we will not quit to toss. Because we'll finally start. Okay. Let's have a look over here. What's out here? Welcome to the fair city of Tilverton, beams the innkeeper. Then she notices your co collective scowls. Please calm down while I explain. You listen and you record it in journal entry 31. Perhaps the sage will help you. You can get weapons from the shop across the way. Okay. That was a bit nice bit of gameplay. Uh, let's go to the Adventurer's Journal and we'll read uh, Journal Entry 31. I said there was going to be a lot of referring to the uh, PDF. Uh, okay. Journal Entry 31. <clears throat> You were brought in by a group in red robes. They said they'd found you on the road, near death. They paid for your rooms in advance, so you could stay as long as you'd like. How much did they pay? You had those tattoos when you came in, but I've never seen anything like them. Falani, the sage, could help you though. You should go see her, two blocks north. Okay. You can get weapons from the shop across the way. Okay, thank you. Let's have a look. So, I guess that's our room. You see a sign overhead. Wind Lord's Inn. Now, oh, that's actually the door out of the inn. What about here? On the bed in this room is a disheveled man tossing in the throes of some great nightmare. He screams, Flaming Giant! Blood Red Mage! The Glinting Knife! Plants that walk! Aye! His voice drops to incoherent mumbling. The innkeeper rushes up. Please leave the man alone. He was found in this state just before you arrived. He was lying near the sewer outfall. Poor man. You leave. Okay. Fire giants in the area? Hmm. Oh, that's where we just came from. <laughs> just barging on him again. No one in there. And no one in there. Okay, so that's the inn down there. Let's have a look. You see a sign overhead. 
Weaponers of Cormia. As you are passing through the crowds, you hear, I swear I heard a woman screaming screaming in the sewers. Hmm. Okay. No, I'm actually going to note that down. Uh, let me just bring up a notepad. Okay, you don't have to worry about this. This is just me making notes for myself. Uh, rumors. People heard woman screaming in the sewers. Okay. As I said earlier, we don't have a journal in this game, so I'm going to have to write stuff down myself. Uh... Oh yes, for the controls for this game, uh, it's a bunch of like shortcuts for the, uh, for the, you know, in the alphabet, you can see C for cast, V for view, and camp is E, and so on. Uh, and I'm using the numpad for moving around, as well as uh, 1 and 7 go up and down this menu here. Uh, 4, 6 is turn around. Uh, 2 is rotate 180 degrees. 8 is move forward. And yeah. So, I think there might be a sidestep, uh, but I'm not too sure. Anyway, you encounter a group of royal guards. They tell you that this way is closed because the royal carriage is coming soon and they send you back. You move away. Okay, so I guess that's where the palace is or something over there. Uh, how much gold do we have? Uh, let's see. Trade. No. Ah, uh, exit. Okay. Let's go into the shop. We have a selection of the finest Cormier steel. Interested? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, so we press P. This pools our gold. Uh, currency has weight in this game. And you don't want one person carrying, like, you know, 10,000 gold coins. Because that crap weighs a lot. <laughs> as you'd expect. Uh, we got around this in the previous game by putting a lot of our gold coins, or platinum coins as it were, into uh, element, into objects which were worth a lot but didn't weigh too much in, individually, like amulets and gems and so on, so. <clears throat> I don't think there was a bank in the game. So we just had to carry around. I think in the end I just ended up dumping huge amounts of gold onto the ground. <laughs> because it was far more than I would ever purchase, than I'd ever buy stuff with. Uh, there wasn't actually much reason to buy stuff in the original game, in Pools of Radiance. The shops only sold basic equipment. Uh, let's have a look. Buy. What have you got? Ah, uh, yes. A fantastic variety of weapons. Fire ditches, Pectacorbine, Bilgrissans, bow sticks, clubs, daggers, four darts, four shard, four shard fork. <laughs> Uh boy. Early D D. Made by a bunch of history and uh military weapon buffs. Not that you'd be able to guess that. Ransour. Old Pike. I kind of like it. As superfluous and uh not superfluous, as uh excessive as it is and stupid. <laughs> and you know, there's really no reason to use a lot of these because they're not that good. Like, a broadsword or a longsword is better than the vast majority of weapons here, but the variety is nice. 50 coins to the pound. I don't actually know how heavy they are individually. Um, I just know that they have a weight attached to them. Uh, let's see, what was Balagar using? Probably a longsword and a shield. Uh, okay, we'll buy a shield. Guess I'll buy two shields. I believe that's purchasing there. Uh, let me see, Balagar items. Yes, you bought two shields. Okay. Uh, you can trade a shield to Irala. Uh, trade. Trade with whom? Trade. Select. There we go. Okay. I have to fiddle with the uh, controls for a little bit. <sighs> Let's see. I'm actually going to have a look at the manual to see whether, uh, to see what the, uh, you know, the damage, uh, amounts are for the individual weapons. It should be right at the end of the, uh, manual. Uh, 
da, da, da. No? Come on, Pool of Radiance had a list of all the weapons in the game and then, uh, and there are damage ranges. Uh, armor weapons permitted by class, no. Weapon list, here we go. Okay, so a hand axe is 1 to 6, 1 to 4 against larger than man-sized. Five inches are 2 to 8, 3 to 12, but that's a two-handed weapon and I tend to prefer having a shield because it lowers your AC more. Uh... Broadsword is 2 to 8 and 2 to 7. So it's a good, uh, like, consistent damage. Longsword is 1 to 8 and 1 to 12. Mm. I think I'll buy two long swords. We'll buy a short sword for scampers. We'll buy a mace. Of course, for Volkmar, because clerics can only use blunt weapons. For the mages, uh, I guess we'll buy a dagger reach and a bunch of uh, and a bunch of uh, darts. That's basically what we started with Pool of Radiance with. So, actually, that was a battle axe. That wasn't a hand axe. What's a battle axe count as? Ah, uh, battle axe. One to eight. One to eight. I want to get that instead of a long sword. It doesn't really matter early on. So it's just, you know, smack him. <laughs> um, I should probably purchase armor before weapons, but this is not a uh, armory. <laughs> is this, if your system can't differentiate mechanically 50 pole arms, are you even trying? <laughs> really early D&D &D made a lot more sense if you run it like a roguelike. Yeah, we're going to be reloading a lot. Sometimes in these games it's just unfair. Don't expect me to be playing this, you know, accepting a death. <laughs> if someone dies during battle, I'm reloading and we're going to try again until people until we do it without anyone dying. It's just easier in the long run. Uh, especially because resurrecting or raising someone from the dead uh, cuts into their constitution. So it just makes it harder. <clears throat> sure, the weapon list is huge, but you get to pick from the two random choices you find. Y yeah. That's another thing, like, what, you may have Bill Gusarms here, I'm probably not pronouncing that correctly, but good luck finding a Bill Gusarm plus two, <laughs> or plus one even. It's going to be long swords, broad swords, two-handed swords, hammers, and so on. It doesn't really go into these uh, other, <laughs> other weapons around at all. Better carry one of each weapon, you never know when it might just be what I need. <laughs> We come across monsters which can only be hurt by a uh, bow stick. Or a joystick. <laughs> Is it a bow stick or a joystick they're vulnerable to? Yeah, we'll just buy Battle Axe. And we'll buy a... Longsword. Do you have a longsword? Should. I think tridents are actually pretty good. Uh, again, not that I'm going to use a two-handed weapon. Trident. They're actually one-handed weapons. Yeah, that's right. So a trident is a one-handed weapon. It does 2 to 7 damage and 3 to 12 against large targets. So, uh, equipping people with a trident is a pretty good option. Is it bastard sword or a broadsword, which is better? Let's see, 2 to 8, 2 to 16. Bastard sword's better. Might actually buy a bastard sword. You can see the cost over there. That's in gold pieces or GP. 25. We've got enough. Uh, because we've got like, what, three, six, nine, twelve, sixteen, like two thousand platinum pieces across all of our characters. Um, I'm not gonna. No, I'm gonna buy a short bow. Uh, we'll buy a mace. And we'll buy, and let's see, previous, get two daggers, and we'll buy a mass amount of darts. Overloaded. There we go. Okay, share. You have to share out your gold before you leave. In Pool of Radiance, they did say, hey, you've left your money here. Do you want it? Um, But you have to share out your uh, money again after you've uh, 
dumped it onto the floor in a big pile so that he could purchase stuff. No, I don't want to buy. I want to view. And we go to items. Okay, so we want to ready the uh, battle axe and we'll ready the shield. Uh, we'll trade the bastard sword to Irala. We'll trade the short bow to Scampers. We'll trade the mace to Volkmar. And we'll trade a dagger to Egrim and the other dagger to Elspeth. Uh, can I... There we go. Okay, you can actually stack the darts into huge piles. That's useful. Uh, trade the 36 darts to Egrim. Exit. How much money do we have? Let's see. Pool. Take. Oh yeah, it's not a problem. Please. Um. Okay, buy another bunch of darts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Whatever. Um. Share it out again. You. Items. Join them together. 40 darts. Uh, trade them to Elspeth. Select. There we go. Whether we're going to use them or not, I don't know. Okay, so you have a axe and a shield equipped. Irala. Inventory. Uh, ready the shield and the bastard sword. Your hands are full. Bastard sword, a two-handed weapon? Hold on. Huh. I guess it is. Okay then. Uh, sell the bastard sword. Twelve. Yep. <laughs> we just bought this from you, but uh, you're gonna have it back. Uh, pool. Buy. I'll just buy a long sword then. Just go for the traditional route. There we go. I feel in some other games, bastard swords are actually one-handed weapons. <clears throat> Um, there we go. And you can see it's actually given us one gold. Uh, it broke up one of our platinum pieces. Uh, view. Oh, I'm going to need arrows. Good thing I just remembered that. Oh, and you're going to need a shield too. Okay. Cool. Bye. Uh... Bye. A shield. Staff sling. Oh, you actually have met. You actually have armor here. Okay, well that, that's fine. <clears throat> um, Belagar, buy. Um, yeah, buy plate mail. Another plate mail. Take. No, I don't take. View items. Wear plate mail. Raid plate mail to Irala. There we go. Uh, right, what else was I going to do? I needed arrows. Uh, 20 quarrels. That's for a crossbow. There we go. 10 arrows. They're one gold each. So we'll buy just a bunch of arrows. A few items. Join. Can't half that. No, I don't want to halve, I want to join. There we go, 90 arrows. Trade to scampers. There we go. The Balagar has an armor class of zero now. Much nicer. Few items. Ready to plate mail. You have an armor class of two. That's all right. I have to find you some rings of protection. Probably just got to buy splint mail for Volkmar. No, we could buy more plate mail. Um, hang on. Can clerics wear plate mail before I waste some money on purchasing it? Armor weapons. Uh, cleric. Any. Good. Yes. Okay. Ah, uh, clerics can use flails. I would have thought they... I guess a flail is a blunt weapon. Morningstar's not. So I guess the flails are like just maces on the end of a chain uh, pool buy I guess we'll buy more plate mail because we imported our characters this might be why we have all this gold with us 
bored with us. Uh, okay, so we're going to buy... What armor is the best armor which our thief can use? Leather armor. Now. Does that include studded leather armor? I think so. We'll try. I think it's only... Uh... Druids, which have a problem with that. Uh, ready your plate mail. There we go. Scampers, view, inventory. No. Items. Ready that. Wrong class. There we go. We have to have leather armor, not studded leather armor. Uh, let's see, where is the armor? Again, there it is. I mean, padded armor. Leather armor is worth more. Guess it's better. Uh, well, people have been talking. Sorry, I'm beginning caught up with this. Like a ring of keys, really. Glaive, glaive, guasam, guasam, each of are in these glaive all right out. <laughs> Staff or a quarter staff, but oriental flavor, flavor. Yeah, pretty much for the uh, bow and Joe staffs. Composite bows only, please, with those cheesy stats. Um, I guess we could use a composite bow. That is better. I don't. We'll purchase one and we'll see, because um, I don't know whether we are restrictioned on uh, scampers from using a composite bow because she's a halfling. Uh, let's see, composite short bow. I can just buy that one. What's the difference between them? Uh, composite long bow, one to six, one to six. Composite short bow, one to six, one to six. Yeah, okay. There's absolutely no difference. We'll buy a composite short bow then. Oh, hold on. No blood drawing for clerics, only brutal bludgeoning. Yeah. <laughs> I do rather like that. Just adds a bit more character to the classes. Other than by fine misting. Yeah. I mean, if you hit someone with a mace enough, I get, it would, I'm pretty sure it would draw blood. Should ditch the halflings anyway, preferably into the nearest sausage grinder. Ah, I like the halflings. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it'd be terrible if we get to Bald Escape because I planned on playing through with Gnome, so. Uh, let's see. So I bought you that composite shortbow. Is that actually better? Let's see. Composite shortbow. What did it say? 1 to 6. Shortbow. 1 to 6, 1 to 6. That has the same stats across all the bows. It might not actually make a difference. I'm just seeing in this it's saying 1 to 6 for all of them. Oh, actually, composite shortbow is only for a fighter. So a shortbow is for the thief. So the thief can't even use a composite shortbow. Uh, right, and the two mages can't wear armor. Okay, few items. Yeah, just put your shortbow and that and that. Yeah, wrong class. Can't use a composite shortbow. You can have this back. 37 gold. Thank you. I'm also going to buy you a short sword so that you can uh, fall back to it if required. Bye. There we go. Uh, did I equip everything on Volkmar? Equip your shield. You have an AC of two. Fantastic. And Egrim. Uh, ready your darts. And Elspeth. Ready your darts. <clears throat> there we go. Share. And... Exit. I think we're done here. May you always strike true. You move away. There we go. We're uh, re-equipped with items again. You can see, let's see, Elspeth is level 6. Uh, Belagar is level 8. 
Arala is level 8, Bokmar is level 6, Scampers is level 9, and Egrim is level 6. And it looks like Volkmar, Scampers, Egrim, and Elspeth are ready for a level up based on their uh, golden colored experience bars up there. You must be this tall to be taken seriously, points at Dwarf. <laughs> uh, so cruel. Okay, what's down here? The street grows narrow and dim here, where's trash piled in the corners. We're going to win camp, we're going to save. This place looks dangerous. I'm going to save. Just in case we get jumped by, like, carrying crawlers or something. Locked. Um. Pick it. We have a selection of the finest Corby of Steel. <laughs> Interested? Uh, sure. Hello. We just broke into your back. You we just broke into the back door of your shop. You don't seem to be fussed by that. He just kicks us out the back. Okay. Fine. Sure. That's just the back entrance to the shop. It's not like the shady and the shady uh shady shop where you can buy magical items or something. You see a sign overhead. Temple of Gold. Okay. It's gold and gnomish gold. Hold on. Gund? Known as Nebulon among gnomes, and as Zionil in the Shining Lands, was the Faerunian god of craft, smithing, and inventiveness. The Lord of all Smiths pushed for innovation and imaginativeness, sometimes to a dangerous degree, as a result of his short sighted desire to create. Gond the Wonderbringer. Titles Holy Maker of All Things, Inspiration Divine, Lord of All Smiths, Wonderbringer, the Gearsmith. I guess just generally, general pantheon. Uh, alignment neutral. Realm is Hunderho Wonderhome. Serves Ogma. Worshipper alignment is everything. Favorite monsters. Gnomes. Pseudo dragons. Animated furniture. <laughs> What's an animated furniture? <laughs> is that like a... <laughs> 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 I'm looking at the wiki here. It's got an animated candlestick, and it's not like Lumiere from uh, Beauty and the Beast. He's a lot more angry than that. <laughs> Hold on, I gotta share some of these pictures. Uh, this, 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 this whole playthrough is just an excuse for me to get distracted. No, discard. No, I don't want that. Get out of here. Image. Image. Uh, desktop. I mean, you saw it, but so <laughs> as an animated candlestick. <laughs> but wait, it gets better. <laughs> I mean, the pun with this is funny. You know, because explaining jokes works so well. Copy and replace. So this is an animated pile of books. According to the wiki, they've lost all shelf control. Uh. <laughs> ha ha. Terrible. I approve. Um. Yeah, okay. It's just animated objects. Does that include armor? Yeah, animated armor. Flying swords. Rugs of smothering. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess that makes sense. Someone breaks into your house, they just get bundled up into the rug. <laughs> Carpet burns. Ugh, okay. friend of mine ran a campaign on the world where that got overrun by a monster apocalypse. Didn't allow halflings as they were now extinct because they just couldn't run fast enough. You'd be laughing, if we're, laughing on the other side of your faces if we were playing Dark Sun. <laughs> Those halflings are pretty badass. And also cannibals. <laughs> Not mimics. 
Yeah, just irregularly magically control stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, because a mimic is like an actual creature. It's not just animated, like... Just like animated, uh... An animated chair or something. <laughs> Think of buying a magic armor, but no. Really ties the room to you. Yeah, a mimic just looks like furniture. Yeah, yeah. A chest. I suppose they can look like other things. Anyway. You see a sign overhead. The curse. That sounds fantastic. What's inside? What's your pleasure? Punch barking. <laughs> <laughs> Good first option. <laughs> uh, I got. I did save after purchasing my items, didn't I? In camp, yes, I did. But before I went into the, it went into the uh, alley. Let's uh save. No, exit. I'm going uh, saving because in the previous game, uh, taverns or inns were death traps. Because brawls could break out, and that would just be like 15 rogues attacking you. As well as the uh, town guard getting caught up in it as well, so. It was dangerous for a level 1 character. And what can I get you? Dragon's Breath, Basilisk, Lemonade, or Whiskey. Lemonade. A special customer has arrived. You have to slip out for a moment. Do you go? Uh, no. You get into a brawl. Well, there we go. We get a brawl. Um, I don't really want to fight this. So who are you, anyway? <clears throat> uh, who are these dudes? Uh, aim. Bar patrons. The sprites for them are better. That is quite a lot of them. Uh, the number on the, uh, this is the uh, battle menu. We play in a grid-based, turn-based thing with actually, you know, some walls and stuff on the map. Uh, they have different sprites than us. They look fancier than we do. That's terrible. Their armor actually has some shading on it. Um. Okay, so. Target him. Whack. Okay. Uh, scampers. Aim. Uh, shoot him. Pew, pew. Actually has a different sound effects. I think. Uh, cast. I guess sleep. <laughs> There's nothing like going into a tavern and just murdering a whole bunch of people. I mean, I see them using flails. So clearly they're there to kill us. Uh, aim. Manual. Hang on. That dude. Hang on. H hold on. Hold on. Uh, exit. I do get a little confused in these menus sometimes. Some of the options are a bit... How is this different from the other one? Uh. Uh, let's see. You do have your darts equipped. You must have just a really short range on darts. Can't throw them across the map. Yeah, there we go. Time. Ow. Hey! Stop that. It's just punch and drink. Punch is the language of taverns. <laughs> I mean, we outclass these scrubs. Get out of here! Uh, oh, you got to attack again. Yeah. <laughs> We're so high level we can just attack multiple times in a row. Uh, there we go. I guess we couldn't attack that guy because it was around the corner. Well, you hit him three times? There we go. Borkumai just casually beating people's skulls in with his mace. We just purchased these weapons, we've got to blood them sometime. 
It's for good luck. How close do you have to be to use darts on someone? Jeez. Uh. Move. Aim. There we go. Uh, hold on. Exit. Aim? Tiger. There we go. Done. Uh, slay. Slay. Guard. Slay. Slay. Quit. 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 Continue battle. No. The party is won! <laughs> and we do a little victory dance at the top there. Woo! Experience! We got 30, 38 experience points. That was really worth our time. And we get loot. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> uh, exit. Let's have a look. What did we get? Short sword and leather. <laughs> Chances of it, any of it, any of it being magical? Uh... Bogwar is affected. Okay, have a look. Any of it magical? No. There is still some treasure left. Do you want to go back and claim your treasure? No. The survivors are tossed outside. <laughs> there was no survivors, so no one was tossed. As you begin to walk out the door, you notice a young woman with a purple sash slip in the side door. A few of the other patrons hang back as if to meet her. As you consider your next move, you hear a commotion around the side of the building. Do you go to investigate? Uh, sure. Game's taken control of the movement here. There is nothing here now, except for an ornate knife, and you record it in Journal Entry 17. Okay. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> Notes. Uh, commotion outside the Curse Tavern Journal Entry 17. And I'll just bring that up. Uh, hold on. Interest journal. No, that's the books. Uh, one. There we go. Okay, so it was journal entry 17. Let's see. Uh, 17. Oh, there's the, uh, there's the dagger. Okay. So that's what it looks like. Hmm. Okay, quite the ornate dagger. I'll just put in brackets. Uh, picture of dagger. Just so I know that that is a picture of a dagger and it's not anything you know, more important. Like, no, I don't want to put a note on the map. Okay. Do we have that in our inventory? Uh, did someone pick that up? Maybe it's a magical dagger. Items. Uh, no. 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 It kind of looks like we just found the dagger. And, uh, you know, that's what it looked like. So. Yeah. Doesn't look like there's anything there. Street grows narrow and dim here. Yep. Probably just a back entrance into the tavern again. <clears throat> uh, sleeping people's skulls. It's be regulation dartboard distance. <laughs> I guess it pretty much is just like throwing d um, dartboard darts at people. Take the lemonade now that you've killed half the room. <laughs> Maybe it really is just a picture of a dagger. <laughs> they just left a picture of a dagger on the ground. <laughs> it's like accosting people with like a picture of a gun. <laughs> Careful, I can fire. <laughs> this paper is loaded. As you're passing through the crowd, you hear the woman in the green robes. Eyes of a fanatic. Eyes of a fanatic. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, 
in green robes. Some of this stuff might actually mean absolutely nothing at all, but I want to note it down in case. What's in here? An acolyte greets you. If you want healing, pray at the altar. The high priest's residence is in the south. He bows and walks away. I guess this is the altar? Looks like it. Hello? Oh, okay, he just heals us. Um. Yeah, no, thanks. The environments in this do look pretty nice. I mean, you know, for the time. As you wander the temple, people begin to stream in. A priest stands before the altar and begins the service. You turn to listen. The thrust of the sermon is on everything's place in the world, especially Tilverton and the Cormier Defense Force. Near you, someone comments, Defense, ha, should, uh, defense, ha, should be occupation force. The service winds down and people pile out. Okay, looks like they're trying to warm people up to Cormier actually taking control of the territory or something. Anything else here among the pews? No, I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. Oh, we're back at the... There we go. Okay. Just map it out completely. And down here is the high priest's quarters. Um, should we drop in on him? Hey, high priest, how's it going? Do you have anything for us? I'm very busy. I am the High Priest. You look troubled, my children. Do you wish to tell me your story? Uh, no. Go with Gond. You move away. Sure. Once we get a better idea of who we can trust around here, I think. Hey, it's night time now. The street grows narrow. Doesn't say what that place is. Good day to you, gentle persons. Do you wish to make a purchase? Uh, sure. This might be just like a generic jewellery shop or something. Silver mirror and one flask of oil. Yeah. Uh, no thanks. Don't need any of that. Thank you. Return soon. Some of the shops have really no purpose at all. Like, I think they plan to have purpose in the, um, at some point, but... Yeah, Tilverton General Store. Oop. You encounter a group of royal guards to tell you this way is closed because a royal carriage is coming soon. At some point, we're not entirely sure when. <clears throat> you see a sign overhead. The Hall of Training. Ah, oh, here's where we're going to get level ups. Do you wish to train? Sure. Oh, it's not split up into different areas? We can just train everyone at once in the same area. That's convenient. Ah, uh, sure. Train character. Become a level 7 cleric. Yes. Congratulations. 51. What was his hit points before? Falkmire does a little victory dance. I wasn't paying attention. I was going to pay attention. Then I pressed the button before I did. That's like 47? That's like 4 hit points? That's not too bad. Apparently he's nearly up another level as well. Uh, scampers. Let's see. 55. Brain. Level 10 thief. 61. That's fine. Uh, save. Sure. As I said, I'm not overly concerned about people's hit points, as long as they don't get just, like, one hit point. Uh, a green train. Yes. 20. Again, I wasn't paying attention. You learn a new spell. Ooh, you can get fourth level spells. Charm monsters, confusion, dimension door, fear, fire shield, fumble, ice storm. Minor globe of invulnerability. Remove curse, bestow curse. You get those at level 4? Cleric gets them at level 3. <clears throat> hmm. Let me have a look at the, at the manual. I want to see how these spells work. Uh, let's see. Charm monster. Changes the target's alliance in combat. Allegiance in combat. It will work on any living creature. The spell affects 2 to 8 first level targets, 1 to 4, 2 second level targets, 1 to 2 third level targets, or 1 target of 4th level or above. 
Confusion affects 2 to 16 targets. Each target must make a saving throw each round or stand confused, become enraged, flee in terror, or go berserk. Dimension Door allows the magic user to teleport itself to another point on the battlefield. Quite useful to get him out of combat. Fear causes all within its area to flee. That's straightforward. I guess that's on the spellcaster? Fire Shield protects the magic user so that any creature who hits the magic user in melee does normal damage but takes twice the damage in return. The shield may be attuned to heat attacks or cold attacks. Oh, okay. So it could be like a cold shield. The magic user takes half damage, no damage if he makes his saving throw, and has his saving throw against the opposite form of attack improved by two. So I guess if you have a cold shield and you get hit by a fire attack. Uh, he gets a better saving throw. He takes double damage from the form of attack the shield is attuned to. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, fumble causes the target to be unable to move or attack. If the target makes his saving throw, he is affected by a slow spell. So they're just like standing there tripping over themselves or something. <clears throat> Ice Storm does 3 to 30 hit points to all targets within its area. There is no saving throw. I think we've got a winner. <laughs> Minor Globe of Invulnerability protects the caster from incoming first, second, or third level spells. Remove Curse removes the effects of a Bestow Curse spell and allows the target to unready cursed magic items. Bestow Curse reduces the target's stacko and saving throw by 4. Okay, that's actually pretty nice. Makes them easier to hit. Protects against minor death. I think we're going to memorize Ice Storm. Uh, you know, what was that? Like 3 to 30? Yeah, 3 to 30 hit points to all targets. No saving throw. No saving throw. That's pretty nice. It's boring. It's just flat damage, but... Train. Yep. Are you at, like, max hit points or something? Oh, no, because Egrim went up a level. Uh, went up in hit points did he he was 20 before so he went up three. Oh, it only does this it only increases the hit points after i choose a spell okay uh you have the same spells so i want ice storm again or shall i get something else for a bit more vers versatility there's also spells from previous levels i could learn protection from evil 10 foot radius that might actually be really useful to learn. Especially if we go up against level draining undead. Uh, is that what it does? Protection from evil, 10 foot radius. Protects the target and all characters adjacent to the target. The spell improves the AC and saving throws the zones are protects by two against evil attacks. It doesn't actually say against about anything about level draining. That's what it did in uh, Strad's Possession. That's why I'm uh, assuming it does that. Level draining is what it says on the on the uh, tin. If you get hit by a creature which level drains, uh, then your level gets drained by one level. And you have to go to a cleric or a uh, temple to get them restored. It's very annoying because it means that spellcasters uh, forget all the spells of their levels <laughs> which have been drained so it's quite annoying level drain isn't evil it's malicious <laughs> one way of putting it it's very annoying i tend to just reload after i got level drained Ugh. it's very specific monsters with stuart so if you see like sh shadows or uh ghasts Ghosts, maybe? It, it tends to be undead, which level drain. Uh, so, you know, it's sort of like, you sort of know if you're going up against a creature which can do it. Um, it's not just going to be like a random goblin which level drains you. I do like that about D&D. It's like very specific creatures which do this thing. The nasty are undead. White, yes, that's it. Thank you very much. I think that was what we faced a lot of in Strad's possession. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, it doesn't say anything about level drain. I feel like getting it just in case, and we're going to be predominantly fighting evil creatures, I'm going to guess. <laughs> 
hasn't been one of these games yet where you're fighting against predominantly good characters. Okay, yeah, well, we'll just save. Uh, see, sure. And we'll uh, continue adventuring. You're showing great progress. Return again when you're ready. You exit the hall. Okay. I just have the, in my mind the uh, thing from Might and Magic 6 or whatever, you know. Good job. Good job. You see a sign overhead. The Sage Falani. Oh, okay. This is where we were told to go. <clears throat> I am the Sage Falani. You were here about the sigils, correct? Uh, <laughs> no. Yes. This is an interesting case. I'll do it for half your funds. How much do you have? Tell the truth, lie, or exit. Uh, tell the truth. She talks and you record it in journal entry 38. Okay, good thing we went and purchased all of our items beforehand. And the thought crossed my mind, but then I immediately realized that you can't do this. You can't dump your gold on the ground and, uh, you know, say, oh, I only have two gold pieces. You're going to have to have one gold piece. Because uh, if items are dropped on the ground, they just vanish. There's very effective, efficient thieves in these games. She talks and you record it in journal entry 38. <clears throat> okay, let me have a look at that. Uh, da, 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 journal entry 38. <clears throat> okay. Stop. You bear the symbol of five different organizations. Three I recognize, one I've never seen, and the last cause me, causes me some concern. The Flame and Dagger is the silver symbol of the Fire Knives, a group of assassins who last operated out of Westgate. That group has been destroyed. Oh, that group had been destroyed, so they must have a new base of operation. I fear I do not know where. The mouth in the palm is the symbol of the god Moanda. This god was banished from the world, but he reappeared briefly as a pile of filth. It laid waste to a section of the city of Eulash before it was defeated. Before its defeat. The cult's colour of choice is green. Uh, so they're Nurgle worshippers. Okay. The org, the ornate Z in the triangle is the symbol of the Zentrim. Isn't it Zentrim? Zentarim with an A in between T and R or whatever. Zentrim, the Black Network. These are an evil alliance of priests, mages, and thieves operating out of Zentil Keep. Some say that they run Zentil Keep. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> Who knows? That might be a bit of a stretch. I think you can also tell them because I think they cut off part of like one of their fingers or something. <clears throat> The flaming symbol I've never seen, so I can give you no information. The last symbol with the crescent moon bears a disturbing similarity to a powerful sage in Shadowdale. For my own safety, I'll say no more about it. Okay. Uh, let me just write that down in my notes. Uh, let's see. Info from Lani about... Azure Bonds, and I'll put Journal Entry uh, 38. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> oh, well, this talking is doing a bit on my throat. <laughs> there is a lot of it. Shadow Dragons. The Shadow Dragons. Ugh, boy. Gaining a level in your games could take months of sessions. You was never mean enough to inflict level drain on the players. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. I think, I don't know. Old D&D &D is very different from earlier D&D because it was sort of like you create characters and if they died, you just create new ones. Um, and you were going to die a lot. I kind of respect that, but at the same time for a video game, it really doesn't work too well because you don't want to have to keep re-rolling characters and leveling them up if someone dies or level drains and so on so it's just it's more of a pain than anything else you move away i've done a little bit of role playing on my own uh, i think it was like fourth edition or something like that um but it was only for like a few sessions and uh, we didn't get very far i played as a i think a halfling monk and i remember i was able to punch in the skull of a gargoyle 
so it's quite fun i'd like to do more but times and you know people and groups are difficult <clears throat> okay um now what do i do i guess we could go to the uh, castle now you're passing through the crowds you hear i'm certain it was a dragon that passed over last night God help us if there's another flight of the dragons. Okay. It might have just been a very large bird. I won't write that down. Dragon. So, you know, okay. We've already killed one. But we lost all of our magic items. Oh no, we won't be able to hit them. Players don't seem to care as much about death as level drain. Yeah, I can kind of understand that. Because it's like... I don't know. Level drain, I, I would find more annoying because it's you have the option of continuing afterwards, but it's like continuing with like one of your legs, like tied or something. <laughs> Whereas dead is that you can't move. So it's like, well, okay. Counter a group of royal guards. They say, make way for the royal carriage. Hey, we've got a little picture. It's like Cinderella. It's made out of a pumpkin or something. You hear the king's voice coming from the carriage. Suddenly, the sigils on your arm glow brightly. You find yourself unable to resist a compulsion to attack the royal carriage. As the carriage retreats, a young man leans out and croaks, Don't kill me! I'm not really the king! Then as he spots your blue markings, he faints back. He faints back, crying, Oh no, not again! The glow begins to fade. A loud bell starts ringing behind you. The guards rush towards you with swords drawn. A battle begins. Uh... Okay. Cast. Fireball. Uh, aim. Manual. I mean, I don't know if we have an option to, like, give ourselves up, so. Royal Guard. 21 hit points. They have an AC of 3. Apparently those Royal Guards don't have very good equipment. <laughs> they can't afford it. Gow. I don't like the idea of that. These, uh symbols on our arms taking control of us okay so let's see we're outside that means it's going to be a three by three square i should be able to cast it right there Ooh. oh no i misjudged it was actually bigger does the fireball get bigger based on level hold on uh Apparently there's druids in this. It's got first level druid spells here. Detect magic, entangle, fairy fire, and invisibility to animals. Um, Fireball. Does one to six hit points per level of the caster to all targets within this area. If the target makes a saving throw, the damage is halved. A fireball has a two foot radius outside outdoors and a three foot radius indoors. We are outside, aren't we? I mean, we're in the street. Maybe this doesn't count as outside. Everyone deserves a nice long campaign. Let me reset your achievement to one in real life year ago while leaving the rest of the party untouched. Yeah. Yeah, you have to be a pretty chill individual to take that. Yeah. Anyway, that dealt with the problem. <laughs> that dealt with the guards. Done. Quit. Done. Quit. Done. Quit. Continue battle. No. Hopefully there's no bystanders. Party is won! Yay, we do a victory dance. Volkmar, Egrim, and Elspeth go up another level. <laughs> uh, I did it, rest. But we have to take magic, sure. Take. Longsword, shield, chainmail. Longsword, shield, chainmail. Longsword, shield, chainmail. Let's leave it. I don't, I don't care. Exit. There is still treasure left. No. You see, beyond... You see, beyond the charging guards, two red-robed men jump the carriage. They haul out a thin man and drag him into an alleyway. One calls out, Do you surrender? Yes. You are thrown in jail. After a few hours, one wall slides open and a thief appears. He hands you your equipment and signals you to follow him. The man leads you through hidden passages, emerging in a dark underground area, the Thieves' Guild. We just murdered, like, 
six, uh, you know, six royal guards, but uh, hey, that's fine. Before you stands a burly man surrounded by several alert bodyguards. He seems somewhat nervous. You look a little rocky. Can't arrest. Sure. Party makes camp. I mean, I suppose if they wanted to kill us, they would have done so already. Uh, memorize. Now we can memorize some more spells. Get sleep. Get another stinking cloud. And ice storm. I wanted ice storm. There we go. Exit. Yes. You see, it memorizes the spells. It remembers the spells which I had memorized before. That's fantastic. In Pool of Radiance, you had to memorize all the spells you wanted every single time you rested, and it got rather annoying having to just go through the list over and over again. You know, just like, yes, I want to memorize these spells. Repetition made it <laughs> kind of tolerable, but you know, it was still extra... And, you know, extra steps which you didn't necessarily need to take. We don't have a fourth level spell. Memorize. Um. Cure light wounds. Oh, you've already got protection from evil. I didn't need to memorize it on my, uh, mage. I was thinking that we wouldn't need to get that because of the cleric but i wasn't sure so we have it twice now that's fine if the if folkbar goes down or elspeth goes down we have another person who can cast it i don't need to memorize it so also character death is something you're kind of prepared for or should be level drain is just an unexpected slap in the face yes especially for people who aren't like don't have the full knowledge of what enemies can do because you don't know that they can do that until they hit you I suppose with something like a basilisk, it's like, oh, it's a basilisk. They're known for, like, petrifying people. So you kind of know to expect it. Whereas a white, it's just like, it's an undead. Um, they can try and eat you. I think more undead are think about, like, paralyzing you. Because I think ghasts and ghouls can paralyze you. Carrying crawlers can as well. Uh... Rest. Yeah. We'll rest for eight hours. <clears throat> I'm gonna have to go back to the training tower training place to uh get levels. Irala's got rather injured. Cast. Cause serious wo Oh. You lose it, yes. I memorize cause serious wounds, not cure, damn it. Exit. Memorize. There we go. Exit. Yes. Yeah, we're gonna rest again. <laughs> Sixteen hours pass. They just lying there, resting on the floor. Um, I think we should be fine now. Exit. Save. D. Nope. Fix? What? What's fix? Is that just cast healing spells? Hold on. No. That healed people. Hold on. Manual. That's a new thingy in this game. <clears throat> uh, let's see. What classes are there anyway? Uh, cleric, fighter, ranger, paladins, magic, mage... Magic users, thieves, multi-class status, dual-class status. I think rangers are new, too. That might be with that, that... Yeah, okay, so there's not druids, but there's rangers. And rangers get the uh, druid spells, I guess. Uh... Okay, rest menu. Fix is used to cast a large number of cure light wound spells with a single command. 
all characters with first level cleric spells will memorize as many cure light spells as they can, cast them on a party, and then re-memorize their previously memorized spells. Fix takes game time and may be interrupted by an encounter. Oh, okay, so it's just like a instant heal my party. <coughs> Rather than uh having to cast heal spells on your party members or um manually. That's quite nice. And it's nice that it re-memorizes their previous spells. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, let's continue. The fire, the fire knives have the king's daughter in the hideout, hoping to lure him into a trap. I cannot directly intervene, but I can offer information. Suddenly, the side door explodes inwards with a deafening crash. Will we get anything done without people just rudely interrupting the whole time? Traitorous scum hisses a fire knife. Fire knife sees them all. He commands his sizable band of thieves. As his men spread out, the guildmaster hurls a poison dagger which catches the fire knife in the throat. His body slumps to the floor, twitching violently. I would say he'd probably be dead even without a poison dagger, but you'd want to be thorough. As he prepares to beat the onslaught, you see an arrow hit the guildmaster in the chest and the fire. I like their little uh, stylings there. They look pretty neat with their robes on. Uh, no, hang on. F fine. Charge! Done. Uh, guard. I wanted to have a look around. Yay, yeah, move near me. You're going to get a... You're going to... Uh... get an automatic attack against you. Oh, they hit Elspeth. Okay, where is the Guildmaster anyway? Thief, 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 thief. Oh, I guess he's injured. We, you can tell who's with us and who's against us by which way they're facing. <laughs> as well as, um, no, over on the, uh, map. Uh, let's see... Also, the name, the color of their uh, name up there. Well, I guess not what the way they're facing. <laughs> Elspeth. Can't cast spells? Uh. Move. Aim. Because you were hit, I guess. Ow. You better not poison us. You can cast. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Stinking cloud. Stinking cloud creates a two by two square, uh, which people. If they get caught inside of it, they uh, have to make a roll or a choking gag, which they, which makes them basically asleep. It's the same thing, um, except they can re-roll it every turn, see whether they are able to hold their breath. Uh, want to cast a fireball? It's actually a guy coming around below us. Cast asleep. Okay, so where would I want to cast this? Uh, there? Here. That was fantastic. Nothing happened. <clears throat> uh, no. Cast. Prayer? I, don't, I think we actually have to cast this when we're not in combat, so that's not actually that useful. Prefer to have a bit more crowd control on them, but, uh... There we go, you can actually cast now. Uh, cast... Fireball. A 
I guess they're a bit too high level to uh, get sweeps across on. There we go. Okay. Manual. Uh. Yeah. We're inside, so that should be. <laughs> uh. <laughs> this shouldn't hit friendlies if I cast it here. Oh, there goes a friendly. Oh well. <laughs> I, to... I do feel like the uh, size of the fireballs has changed. <laughs> That's my excuse. Okay, stinking cloud. Let's show what that. Let's show what that's like. Uh, I can cast that here. Actually, no, I can't. That's too far. Yep, okay. We're just gonna have to abort that. We're not close enough. Yep, abort spell. This is a very o wide open space anyway, so we're not really going to be able to, like, crowd control with spells like that. Uh, no, don't attack ally. Cast. No, that's not cast. Cast. You can cast a stinking cloud. Uh. Cast it there. Actually, hang on. Uh. I think it casts it in the top left corner. There we go. Good. Aim. Pew. Hold off on casting new spells. We'll just like throw darts at them and so on now. Oh, they're fleeing. Cast a uh, magic missile. Cast a magic missile. Aha! You're not escaping us! Free hit! Oh no, they're gonna run off. Ooh. Nope. Bot. Get out of here. Go. Nope. Okay. Uh. Cut him down, and you can use a arrow against him. Don't step into my stinking cloud, you fool. I guess you got through it fine, so it's not really a problem. And yeah, the uh, battle maps are just can get quite large. You really don't take advantage of it, but uh... Hey, it's there. Can I go side diagonally? God. Delay. God. Delay. Also, because they're wearing heavy armor, you know, they're going to be moving slower than my mages. Uh. No, I don't. Good. 
can like stand on the table <laughs> or something done exit done quit done quit again sometimes the uh, options in the menu I get a bit confused about because it's like sometimes it feels like it does one thing and um, sometimes it feels like it does another thing I think we're gonna have to chase him down I think he's stuck in a corner down there yeah he is <laughs> he can't run off the battle map there there we go quit 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 Guarding, guarding, quit battle. No, well, never, yes, anyway. The party is won. Each character receives 1,179 experience points. Uh, we get loot. I don't remember any, uh, detect magic spells. Dagger leather armor, dagger leather armor, da dagger leather armor. Uh,. Let's see. Short bow, shield, long sword, leather armor, leather armor, long sword, shield, short bow. Five arrows. <clears throat> Chances of any of this being magical. I will take the long swords, just in case that they're like long swords plus one, and the shields. Even if it's magical armor, le magical leather armor, oh, I'll take them. And the Arrows and a bows. They had better different. They had different gears, so you know. The guildmaster gasps. On balance, I'd rather be in your lash. And then he dies. You find information on his body and log it as journal entry four. Okay, let's see. Uh, dead thieves guildmaster notes journal. Entry four. What's this say? Uh, oh, okay, it's actually a map. Journal entry four. A map marked sewers. Well, I guess guild is up there. Key door. I doubt. There's an S there. You know, it might be useful to actually have the uh, key include what the S is. Okay. There's a whole bunch of doors leading off from there. I guess this is a route through the sewers or something which we'll have to take. Hmm. Okay, now that we've uh, butchered a whole bunch more people, you are attacked by a menagerie. That is quite the menagerie. I see gorillas in there. <laughs> um, aim? I want to have a look. What is this? Fire knife, fighting dogs, monkeys. <laughs> Okay, these guys have attack monkeys. They're armed with slings. <laughs> they got six hit points. Even the the dogs have more hit points than that. They got twelve. AC of six. <laughs> okay. Does the uh, journal say anything about these about these monsters? Monsters. Monkey, these beasts are sometimes trained to execute specialized tasks by thieves. Okay, that's all they say. <laughs> it doesn't have attack dogs in here? Nope. Okay. I shouldn't look over that list. It's spoiling what other creatures we might come across. It's going to be all over with a fireball. Yeah, monkeys can be pretty monstrous. I would think so. I know they can be pretty ferocious, but uh, in this they don't seem to be too bad. 
Buy more time. It's the answer to all your problems. Aim. Uh, manual. I don't know. Sorry. Okay. Manual target. Fireball time. Uh, yeah, about there. I said... Is that too far away again? No. Target! Sorry, doggos. Uh, we'll cast sleep. I think I actually cast it on her. <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't have an effect. That was a bit of an oops. Cast sleep. Manual target. I mean, you know, good thing it didn't do anything because we're too high level for sleep to affect us. We made one of the dogs go to sleep. Yeah, they're really too high level to be put to sleep. That's more useful for like kobolds. Dead. Uh. Sad implementation. That was not a thirty-three ten. That was not thirty-three ten-foot cubes. It was like fifth edition's tragedy. I do like that it does do the fireballs different sizes. As I said, like if they're outside, they're smaller than they're, if they're inside. What did it say? It was like five by five inside and like three by three outside. Um, so there's a bit of variety. More than say Neverwinter Nights, where a fireball was just the same regardless. Um, I do like the little bit of extra difference, but apparently it's not how it is otherwise. Forty foot sphere of lame unpasture unpressurized fire was no downsides. A lot more destructive was it in the tabletop. Uh let's see, where is the spell again? <clears throat> Fireball has a two foot radius outdoors and a three foot radius indoors. Yeah, I don't know how big a square is in this game. I'm assuming it's a foot, but well. Doesn't seem like it's exactly that. Let's get rid of that dog. They're fleeing! Cut them down. Ah! Run off! Uh. Aim. I like that you can run halfway across the room and still get a shot off. <laughs> I think he's gone and gotten stuck in the corner, got himself stuck in the corner again. So we're just gonna have to chase him down. I don't really want to heal anyone in this available time, I think. Uh. Aim. Manual. You missed. Fantastic. Come on, scampers. Aim. Missed. Fantastic. Bella guy, get up there. And a roller. Ow! Sod! He's actually... gotten his, uh... He's actually, uh, rallied.
just standing around. Thank you. There we go. I don't remember them being like running off and getting stuck in a corner being so much of a problem in Pool of Radiance. It would happen occasionally, but uh... there we go. Everyone receives 401 experience points. Uh, sure, what's the pool got? Three slings, five arrows, short bow, shield, long sword, leather armor. Eh, I don't care. Nope. Okay, let's save. E. Oh. Exit. There we go. Uh, back in the day, you had to deal with the downside to fireball to get the above level damage potential. Five by five, usually. A DM would relish reading off the list of the treasure which they had reduced to non-magical slag. <laughs> yeah, I I'm kind of glad that, you know, if we use a fireball, it doesn't destroy uh, the equipment. Oh, you come across some running thieves. What do you do? Remain calm. Attack, remain calm, flee. Remain calm. They yell as they run past. The fire knives are pushing up from the south. They're boiling out the sewers. Okay. Here on the table is an open guest book. The last entry reads, O Ruskettle, Bard of the Realms. Touch the harp and lose your hand. Okay. I'm gonna write that down. That that's weird. I don't know what that is. It might be just a reference to a character from the setting or something like that, but yeah. You prefer to think of it as treasure and potentia. It's not good if it's a TPK. Equipment, scenery, morale, it's all charcoal. You're attacked by a menagerie. Another menagerie. Looks like there's only one uh, monkey in this group. <laughs> That's so dumb. <laughs> They've got to attack monkeys. I mean, I guess why not, but... Only blessed him. Boo. Okay, stinking cloud. Uh, manual. We'll cast it here. I said, we'll cast it here. Now, our allies were actually moving through the stinking cloud. In Pool of Radiance, casting a stinking cloud essentially made those squares in. Um, untraversable for the AI. Uh, they would just be like, you know, oh, I can't step into that, as long as it remained. And then when it disappeared, they could step into that square again. But um, in this, they actually moved through it, so it might not be as uh, effective as a effective a defense as it was previously. Should be a bit more careful with casting my spells. I feel like we're going to be doing quite a bit of fighting for the moment. You know, there might be a tougher battle. No, they don't seem to be passing through it. <laughs> okay. Ow. Dead. Also, as you can see here, <coughs> um, the dogs, which are two by one square large, cannot fit into a one by one square sized area. They can't turn, like, vertically. It's very important to understand that, especially when you're fighting against things like trolls and ogres. Uh, they are two by one squares vertically stacked. Like this. And like this. So, you know, they can have a lot of difficulty trying to get past each other. Making one go to sleep when it's right up against you can prevent a lot of others from attacking you. Which helps a lot from getting surrounded and, uh, 
beaten down. Oh, you got hit. Can't uh, cast a spell. I wonder if a stinking cloud would be would be more effective against a dog because I've got a better sense of smell. Dogs should be immune to stinking cloud. They generate themselves all the time. <laughs> Maybe these dogs have had, like, baths recently. They're very clean dogs. No. Oh. oh. This combat is sucking because we're just missing all of our magical items, which would improve our hit chance, and... It's just sad days all around. We're just, you know, swinging and missing all the time. Get you. A damn monkey. Okay. It's not really a good idea to move into the uh, range of enemy units, but. Balagar's got enough hit points that if he gets attacked, it's, you know, he's probably going to survive it. Not too fast. Uh. There we go. Dead. I'm going to have you move to here, and you're going to cast Cure Serious Wounds, because Irala is hurting a bit. Uh, guard. There we go. Manual. I keep pressing enter there, but that doesn't work. You have to press T for target. That's a ranged spell? It casts a projectile. Hold on. Does it cure... Cause... Cure serious wounds. Heals 3 to 17 hit points. Doesn't say anything about range in the manual. That would be useful to know. I thought it was on touch. Those spells. Looked like he was casting it from a distance. Oh well. No, oh no, the dogs are running away. Um. Oh, did I put you on quick? No, don't go on quick. There we go. Done. Quit. Quick is like auto, and uh, don't tend to want to do that. And it's very difficult to turn off. At least the pool of radiance it was. You had to be like, you had to quickly press like Q when that t character's turn came up before they automatically took their turn. And, uh... I just prefer having control of the character the whole time. I don't trust the AI. To not do something stupid. There we go. The air clears a little. Uh, aim. Hit the monkey. Dead. Yeah, see. The turn went automatically. Also, because I guess the AI could, like, cast a spell. You don't want them to be wasting their spells on, like, a fleeing dog. <laughs> Ow. There we go. Can I have a rest? Nope. 
Yay! 390 experience points. Puts in the pool of items. Slings. Blah, blah, blah. Don't want any of it. <clears throat> nope. No gold either. Okay. In camp. Save. E. O. Rest. Hang on. Magic. Do I actually have to memorize the spells? No. If I cast a spell, I'll have to re-memorize it. But if I've, uh... Uh, yeah, okay, so I think that's the difference. In Pool of Radiance, if you wanted to memorize one new spell, uh, you had to, like, reset all of your spells. It seems in Curse of the Azure Bonds, you can you only need to re-memorize the spells which you've cast. Though it doesn't remember, like, I had prayer memorized before. I don't have to do the entire list every single time. So it's a bit easier. I mean, we're probably just going to get interrupted in our sleep, but... We can try. I did rest... I did uh, save beforehand, so... I think we're going to have to worry about invisible. Now, oh, and you have no fourth level, so rest, rest. Hey, we managed to rest for eight hours while this place is being sieged. Okay. Uh, save E. No. Fix. There we go. Fix again, Elspeth. There we go. Good. Save. E. Nope. That's very useful. I don't have to go through healing everyone manually. I like that. What's up here? You hear howling from ahead. The fine eyes release their dogs. They haven't already? Wow, that is a lot of dogs. Yo, Ingram. Um... Cast. Fireball. Uh, aim. Manual. Nice. Get him before he runs! Damn it. Now we have to chase after him. I mean, he might just run off the map, but... You can see that these battle maps do actually kind of constrain to the area which you were in before. Uh, this is like the hallway which we're in, and this is the room uh, where we started. So, it's rather neat. I would like to see, like, what the areas look like overall. But, uh, I guess it'll just be a bunch of rooms with stuff in it. feels like a lot of effort was put into it, even though you don't see a lot of it. Because there's, like, chairs and all that scattered around as well. Done. Quit. 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 Nope. 421 experience. Yay. What have we got? Eh. Stuff I don't care about. What's in here? Actually, it's a save again. But you never know. You hear howling from ahead. Ow. 
Release their dogs again. How many dogs do they have? Yeah, and I think on the battle map it would mean that they were now like in the area to the right of where we were before. If we look over here. Yeah, you can see there's a corridor which we were just fighting in. So. It's rather cool. As far down as I can go. Uh, cast. What level would a dog count as? Enough for sleep? Cast it on myself again. I didn't mean to do that. Biggest hurdle for this is going to be me rememorizing the spell, rememorizing the button presses. Uh, ow. Ah! Well, I mean, I sup. What did I just say? I suppose dropping a fireball at my feet was a good what is a way to uh, solve a problem. Uh, <laughs> solve the problem of living. I mean, that's something which would happen to tabletop, I guess. Unless someone forgot to specify a tar target. I keep thinking target is going to be like, oh, you can like choose a target. But no, target is just target this square. <laughs> They're gone crazy. <laughs> They're fleeing. I don't blame them. I don't trust myself. Um, yeah, okay. I'm just going to reload the game there. We'll just forget that that old, that, uh, reality ever existed. That was getting very silly. Oh, boy. And yes, if you want to reload, it's quickest just to, like, quit the game and load it up again. Load save game. E. This is why I made saves. Okay. Oh, uh, begin adventuring. Search. There we go. E. And there we go. Okay. Cool. If that's just going to be another fight against dogs and all that out there. The clang of metal on metal and the growls of animals locked in mortal combat echo through the halls. Okay. At the end of the corridor, you see a halfling with a harp dodge into a doorway and disappear. Hey, I guess that's the, uh... That's the, uh, bard which we saw. Right. Halfling. Uh, right, halfling, next to the note I made earlier. Since he's got a harp and it pointed it out. Uh, pick the lock. Oh, I guess- BASH THE DOOR DOWN! Fire knife releases the pack. Cast. Pray. They're actually moving a lot faster when they're not on screen. That's something new. Okay, I should cast prayer out of combat, not just when people aren't within melee range. 
Okay, now let's see. Manual. There we go. Okay, good. <laughs> See, I can learn from my mistakes. Especially if my mistakes end up with, like, majority of my party dying. Dead. Good. Uh, yeah, it's actually too far away for you to... Missed. Can you attack? Up, up, up. God. Oh, you didn't break. Huh, how about that? That dog is too far away. Aim. Manual. There we go. There. God. Quit. 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 Nope. Hooray! Uh, nah. No, I don't care. This room littered with gnawed bones and leashes. I'm going to search mode, actually. Bodies lie twisted one, un one about another, locked in combat until death. Search mode takes longer, but it can let you find hidden items. Wounded dogs back away from you, growling. Their masters lie dead on the floor. I bashed the door down. I don't think there's really any reason to, like, bash a door or pick a door. Let me have a look at that map again. Is this like the area which you're in currently? Seems too long. Uh, too vertical map which we're looking at to uh this map to uh be the area which are in currently and this doesn't feel like a sewers this feels like the guild still so uh bash pick this door is impenetrable okay A stone shatters against the wall near your head. Monkeys and fire knives attack. Oh, there's actually some different guys here. <laughs> uh, yeah, target there. Who's that guy there? Mage. Okay, uh, we're gonna want to deal with you. Hey, that's my trick. Uh oh. Um, cast. Uh, cast magic missile. There is another mage. I should probably cast it on you because you haven't gone yet. Bam! Dead. Get you out of a stinking cloud. Oh, don't hit them. Eh. 
Okay, you hit him with a magic missile. Uh, likewise for the enemy, uh, if if the enemy, likewise if the enemy are in a helpless situation, if we're in a helpless situation, uh, yeah, <laughs> we could be killed easily. There we go. Bloody mages. Get rid of them. Okay, step out of it. Um, I'm gonna cast a mirror image on you. Ah, uh, no. Actually, just aim. I said manual. Can't aim. Have you run out of darts? Yeah, you have. Okay. Ready your dagger. And you can just... Stand this. No! Damn it! That's what I was afraid of. Uh... Scampers is down. <sighs> Finish cutting down the rest of the monkeys. No, don't attack our life. Reload because Gampers died. Ah, how we go for time? Okay. I might actually take a brief break and then we'll come back to this. Uh, play. There. Load. What's under E? I have to begin an adventure. E search. There. Okay, so I am going to take a brief break. I'll pause the recording here and we'll be back in a moment. Okay, we're back. <clears throat> this whole intro thing for this uh, game is quite lengthy. Not that I mind it. Hello? Assassins leap on you. Oh good, no more dogs. Aim. I say next. Hold on. <coughs> okay, so there's mages again. <coughs> Target. <coughs> Cast. Oh! Wow, I am impressed. Apparently you can cast magic missile on yourself. Who would know? How do you think you were able to do that? They're too high level to uh, cast sleep on. Cast magic missile manual <clears throat> on him. There we go. Let's just get rid of that mage. The dead mage isn't. A mage which will cause no problems. Oh. 
Looks like they're fleeing. Hit him all the way down the hook corridor there. Oh, nope. it's too far. Uh, we go. Aim. Oh, good, you hit him. Done. God. Oh, he ran off. Nope. There we go. Hmm. Exit. No, I don't want to have a look at the treasure. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's save. E. O. We go back up here. Are we in camp? Will we? Will we be able to rest? Hey, there we go. Uh, Volkmar. You've got all your spells memorized. Scampers can't memorize any spells. Hey Grim, I want you to memorize two magic missiles. Yes. Elspeth. Magic. Memorize. M. And a firewall. There we go. And rest. Hey! We're just gonna have to fight through these guys that just keep spawning? I guess so. All the dogs are like crowding down the corridor, they can't fit past each other. They're all in single file. Ow. Okay, manual. Can we get rid of some of these handlers? They still can't get past that one fire mage that fire uh fire fire knife there. That run off. Well the dogs are running off. You won't be as lucky. You're hemmed in by your dogs. No, don't attack Al. That's probably bad practice. I use the uh, movement arrows to determine who I'm attacking rather than uh, choosing a target. So I'm sort of just moving into the enemy for the most part for attacking you melee. It works, um, but I feel like it's not necessarily the way you're supposed to go about doing it. Because it still gives you the target option. 
straight away. There we go. Exit. No, I don't care about the treasure. At the end of the corridor, you see a halfling with a half dodge into a doorway and disappear. Well, we saw that already. Over here. Let's save. E. Nope. And exit. What's up here? Assassins! Uh, cast. Magic Missile. Manual cast. On him. Good. The mage didn't actually cast any spells. I guess he got interrupted by the, uh, slash we gave him. I like that, that you can hit a mage and, uh, sort of disrupt their concentration so much that they are unable to cast spells that round. I don't know if that's something in other RPGs which I've played. Uh, D and D RPGs. I know you can interrupt a spell in progress. Maybe the other games tend to go much faster, so you don't see it as much. No manual. Don't target on self. It's too far away. Okay. Uh. cast it there. Yeah, that's the thing about uh, Stinking Cloud. It's got a really short uh, distance. Cast distance. Ow! Could you like stop hitting me with your darts or whatever they are? Doing it far too often for comfort. Not with that weapon. No, because we're equipped with the dart. Right, view, items, swap weapons. There we go. Get back here. I'm not done with you. There we go. Good shot. Nope. Hey, victory. Uh, take. They do have darts. Uh, let's take the darts. We can make use of those. And the arrows. I should probably have been picking those up. And they got a quarter staff. I'd actually take the quarter staff. Overloaded. Well, who's picking this up? Balagar. Take. Take. And the arrows. Oh, because he's got all the leather armor, long swords, and so on. That we picked up earlier. That's fine. Exit. Nope. Okay, view items. Uh, let's see. I want you to trade seven darts to Egrim. I want you to trade seven darts to Elspeth. I want you to join these together and trade these 19 arrows to Scampers. Save. E. No. Exit. The clang of metal and metal and the ground of animals. We're behind the, uh... Random encounters. Uh, cast. I think there's another bunch of monkeys down there.
Uh. I'm glad you could cast that through the doorway there. Okay, cool, cool. Aim. Ow. Stop that. Ow. Ow. Damn it. I'm guessing they're not magical darts, because I would assume they wouldn't be able to stack together even if they were unidentified. Uh... Back the dog. View items, no join ready aim there. Uh, right. Mind us, we're just gonna swing and miss for multiple times in a row, you know. Perfectly fine. Like we're fighting for our lives here or anything. Well done. Cast. Uh cast sleep. I want you to cast that there. Well, he made one of them go to sleep. That's better than none. Um, so I want you to view items. There we go. Stab, stab, stab. Cast magic missile. Good. I don't want Volkmar like dying. That would be unfortunate. Okay, they're running. Uh, finish off that. Finish off the eight. Cut him to pieces. And well done. Okay, I gotta assume that dog's going to run off the map. Yep. Uh, cast. Cure serious wounds. Target yourself. Nope. Exit. Oh. Okay. In camp. Save. E. No. Fix. Fix again. Save. E. No. That is a great option. You hear howling from ahead. The fine eyes release their dogs. Aim. You can see that these. Uh, attacks which are which we're getting ambushed by th there's like only a number of them uh, a number of sort of set uh, variations of them uh, something I keep forgetting to do I have to cast prayer outside of combat um 
because there's like what these three guys and a bunch of dogs and there's ones with some dogs and the apes then there's like the ones with some mages uh, it's not just randomly throwing them together I guess sleep there we go cast you can cast fireball Uh, oh, I cast Bless. Oh, well, Bless works against us. Oh, um, Bless seems to, like, only work on people out of melee combat. Uh, I keep getting thrown off how these spells work and how they change amongst the different versions. Uh, different games. Let's see. Easiest way is to consult the manual. Bless improves the Thacko of friendly characters by one. The Bless spell does not affect characters who are adjacent by monsters when the spell is cast. Okay, and prayer is... Improves the Thacko and saving throws of friendly characters by one and reduces the Thacko and saving throw of monsters by one. So I guess it does affect all of my characters, it just doesn't display that it's going off on my characters. I'm always at least used to how, like, prayer works in, say, the later ones, where it's like, Bless is, like, a buff for one character, whereas prayer is a buff for the entire party. Which they kind of are in this, but... I don't know, maybe prayer always has the uh, debuff effect to it. I just misremember things all the time. Oh, have you run out of arrows? There is a lot of things to remember though in these games, so I feel it's kind of justified. And because they're so similar to each other, it just sort of blurs into each other. Prayer could be way better than that. Yeah, I feel like in like Ravenloft games, it is better than what we're reading there. but I'm not going to dig out the manual for that or the PDF for that to see how it works in that game guess I could take the check the bold escape manual uh, again I should be checking people's inventories to get their arrows and their darts so that I'm not running low on these resources Come back, dogs! I want to give you a pat with my sword. Only because the game doesn't let me pat you. This is a wolf 3D. Wolf 3D. Too far away. I'm sure in some of these games, like the spells would actually function differently in game to what they were said, what how they were said to uh, work in the manual. <laughs> Maybe I'm just being overly paranoid. There we go. Uh, let's see. Take. Yes, I want those uh, arrows. So scampers. We'll take the arrows. 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 Exit. Exit. Nope. Uh, blesses plus one, plus zero to everyone. Prayer can be up to plus three, plus three, as you recall. Okay. Let me have a look at the Baldur's Gate manual. <clears throat> Baldur's Gate's got priests. 
which I'm pretty sure are just like mm, cleric versions of mages. Uh, let's see. Bless. Cast of raises the morale of friendly creatures and any saving throws, any saving throw rolls they make against fear effects by plus one. Uh, area of effect 50 foot cube. Casting time is one round, duration of six rounds. Furthermore, it raises their attack dice rolls by plus one. Caster determines at what range, up to 60 yards, he will cast the spell. At the instant the spell is completed, it affects all creatures in a 50 foot cube centered on the point selected by the caster. Thus, affected creatures leaving the area are still subject to the casting to the spell's effects. So bless actually, you know, blesses your entire party in Baldur's Gate too. Oh, uh, in Baldur's Gate. Uh, where is prayer? Your critical wounds. Flame strike, raise dead, that's level 5. Reaction, animal summoning, strength of 1, remove paralysis, rigid thinking, roof curse, protect him from fire. Invisibility purge, glyph of warding. Doesn't look like it actually has prayer. No. It's got chant. Causes harm to his enemies. When the chance spells are completed, all attacks and damage rolls and saving throws made by those in the area of effect who are friendly to the priest gain plus one bonuses, while those of the priest's enemies suffer minus one penalties. Multiple chants are not cumulative. So it looks like prayer was actually chain named chant in Baldur's Gate 2, whether that was just because of a different edition or something. Or it's at least a similar enough spell. Actually forgotten about that. I don't... I think I used chant too often, though back when I played Baldur's Gate I wasn't overly concerned about like buffing my party as effectively as possible. So. It was just more fireballs, magic missiles. I do mean to play through Baldur's Gate at some point. Fun game. Crash. Chant is different, should stack with more casters. Okay, right, right. Magic Missile. Magic Missile. Magic Missile. I actually have Summoner from, uh, GOG. If that's a reference to that. I should, uh... That's another game I mean to play. I enjoyed the demo of it. I never actually fin played the full version. You hear howling from ahead. The Fire Knights release their dogs. Yeah, fight me yourselves. Don't use dogs. Uh... Cast stinking cloud. Cast it there. Since they're happy to go through that doorway there. There we go. I didn't mean to step over there, but uh, whatever. Uh. Sure. Let's see what ice storms like. So how big of a radius did this have? Oh boy. I don't think I can cast it through this doorway. Well. I haven't hit my own guys yet. Hey! That was actually a pretty good casting of it. I really need to get a look at getting like the big box versions of say Icewind Dale and Baldur's Gate 2. I have a compilation version of Baldur's Gate 2 and it didn't come with a manual or the a big manual. Same with Icewind Dale, I got, I got like a l later re-release of it and I don't think it came with a manual. Icewind Dale 2, I don't think that actually came with a large manual either. Maybe it was only Baldur's Gate series which came with ones. Icewind Dale 2, Icewind Dale games were a bit more straightforward drives. Prayer. 
uh, C3, PHB, 60 foot radius, plus one attack damage, safe to friendly, minus one to enemies, if someone is also casting chant of same religion, it's plus two. Oh, okay. So you can like chain them together. Or like, benefit each other from casting those spells at the same time. That's neat. I don't think that's something I've seen done in these games. I can guess why, but it would have been a neat feature. Some of these games, the uh, SSI games is what I mean when I say that. Um, there's a series of these ones done on the Dragonland series, and I like those ones. Though I haven't played them, uh, I've watched someone play through them quite a while ago. I can't remember who it was. Um, might have been Old Dragon? Not too sure. Um, but the Dragonlance games, they have the different Draconians, and they all have different death effects, which is what they have in the lore, but it's neat that they, uh, simulated that in the games. So some of them explode on death, other ones, if you, like, deal the killing blow, I think you lose your weapon. Um... Isn't there other ones where they, like, melt into a pool of acid or something? Can't remember. It's been ages since I've read Dragonlance. We just have to wait for this stinking cloud to disappear. Too far away. Hey! I went into auto mode. I didn't mean to do that. That's what I mean. Auto mode. I'm gonna run into the cloud. Because that's a good idea. Oh. oh well. I guess you're just attacking them at range now. It's not too bad. Nope. Oh. Pool. No, don't pull. Share out. That's our gold. Uh, scampers. Take. Take the arrows. There we go. Nope. Camp. Save E. Nope. Fix. Uh, memorize. Yeah, memorize spells again. And memorize. And Volkmar. Uh, memorize a bless. And you can memorize a cure serious wounds. There we go. So I guess it should be praying for those rather than memorizing, but whatever. I think I had the same problem of not casting like blessing prayer on my party before I entered combat in Pool of Radiance, because I think a lot of the battles you don't know when they're going to occur. And time does pass when you're going from square to square. So you can cast prayer, but then you might move you know, like five or six squares and the spell effect will just end. So casting it in preparation for a battle only works if you know that if you step into the square in front of you that you're going to have a battle. And uh, that is the case sometimes that, you know, specific squares, there are battles which will always occur there. This one actually looks like one because there's a bunch of guys which haven't been any of the other battles. These are thieves. And he can't actually cast spells because he was hit in combat. 
Uh, cast a stinking cloud. Sleep's not too useful against these guys. They're a bit too high level. Uh, right there. Hmm. I think you could hold off. Don't have any arrows equipped. Uh, join, equip, aim. There we go. Damn it, I put him on automatic. Ugh. I wish it had a confirmation for that. No! Oh. This is a problem. It's, it's not I'm putting all of my party members on automatic. And it's because I'm trying to stop them from being in automatic, but. I'm going to turn the cycles way down so that I can uh, try and uh, take them out of it. Hold on. I'm having to like bump the cycles up a bit and then turn them down again. Uh, whatever. Well, fork mass hopped out of it. Maybe it only lasts for a turn. I like how that guy back there is running around and around in circles trying to get into the room. Trying to step over his unconscious fellows. But, uh, no luck. This is, uh... Scampers. Yeah, old people woke up. Uh, come on. Could you, like, choke and gag on the uh, stinking cloud? You're still inside of it. There you go. Silly sod. What's that? You're stepping into it several times. You have to try every single time you step into there, you know? Oh, my sinking cloud. No, they're running off. Whatever. Um. Guess I'll just put people on quick. That way it'll just play it automatically. There we go. That's a bit faster. It's just as long as they don't cast spells. Let me actually have a look at the manual and see what it says about quick so that I understand how it works. Uh...
Quick, turns control of the character over to the computer. See the quick start card for instructions on how to gain manual control of a character. Under computer control, a fighting character will, with readied arrows will tend to hang back and fire arrows. If the character has no readied arrows, he will ready a melee weapon and charge. Oh, okay. Is that what the quick reference card's for? I mean, that would just be like keyboard shortcuts. Uh, Alt Q sets all characters to quick. Alt M toggles magic spells on off for characters set to quick. Oh, okay. So you have to manually toggle them to cast spells. Space resets all characters to manual control. Okay, cool. So I just have to mash S, mash space if I want to gain control of my characters again. Good, good. See what reading the manual gets you. <laughs> I really should do it more often. Maybe not more often, otherwise we wouldn't be making any progress at all. Um, there we go. Yeah, yeah. I don't care. Save. E. No. Exit. There we go. Bash the door down. What's in here? It's an empty room. A party of fire knives spots you. They charge. Okay. I actually had different dialogues, so I imagine it's a different uh, combat thing. Actually, exit. Move forward. Uh, hmm. What have you got? Sleep, mirror image, stinking cloud, fireball. Not really worth casting any of those in this battle, I think. Just, yeah, just do that. There's a neat thing in this game, you can customize what your characters look like. Uh, we did design our characters in a Pool of Radiance. They actually look the same as they did uh, then, which is quite neat. I don't know whether you could change their appearance afterwards. Maybe. I haven't looked into it. But it's rather in depth. You can like change what the appearance of the weapon they're holding is, what their shield is, whether they've got a shield, whether they've got like a two-handed sword or a one-handed weapon, uh, whether they, what their like little head looks like, whether they've got a beard on or not, what color all those things are, including like what the shading of their armor is, so you can make it look like you know they've got like metal armor on or leather armor, as a bunch of my guys have. It's all just appearance, but you can really, there's a fair bit of customization for how they look, which is rather neat. <laughs> it may not seem like much, but you know, in a game like this, you, you take what you can get. No, it's neat for the time, you know, you can make each, you can make your party feel like your own bunch of dudes. Get out of here. There we go. Nope. Oh. <sighs> Tell me there's an exit down there. Chase after you. Get back here. Uh, and they've gone through the doorway. Yeah, okay, they're running off.
Now that I know how uh, quick mode works, it's quite handy. I can be confident that they're not going to be casting fireballs on my own dudes. There we go. Uh, scampers take leather arrows. Uh, lo the arrows, not the leather arrows. Those aren't good arrows. It's like something from Might and Magic Three. Yes, I find and find a pool of uh, a quiver of leather arrows. This is like minus three to hit. You hear howling from ahead. Fire knights, fire knights, release their dogs. Okay. Uh, next person who is able to cast a spell, I think we will drop a fireball here. Cast. Fireball. Uh. Wait. Target. Um. Hmm. Uh, yeah. I can actually center it on that square. Uh, yeah, cast it there. Ah, fireball. The perennial room clearer. <laughs> Uh, exit. Just whatever. Run away! Uh. Actually, um, let's go quick. Quick! Quick! Those dogs have backed themselves into a corner. They don't know where the uh, door is. Mm, Volkmar, you're taking a fair bit of damage. You're going to need some healing. Nope. There we go. Uh, scampers, take the arrows again. Exit, exit. Nope. We're not getting any money for this. They're not dropping any, like, gold. It's really disappointing. Camp. Save. E. No. Fix. There we go. And we'll rest up and memorize our spells again. Uh, fireball. Yep. Memorize. What did I cast? I think I did detect magic. I think we've only got one of those. Should probably have two. There we go. And... Rest. Rest. There we go. Save. B. Because I expect there to be like a boss fight at the end of the, all this. You see green slimy marks on the floor. More distinct near the door. Okay, I guess that's the entrance to the sewers. Oop. Oh yeah, if we press L... No, hang on. Oh, if we press A, uh, that brings up the area map. This is the map you would go off in-game. If we didn't have this handy-dandy map over on the right. Uh, it's... It's not... Terrible? Um... It's zoomed in more than the one which we're seeing. So you can see over to the left there in the bottom left corner, that's the inn. Uh, whereas the map which I have over here, uh, it actually shows the entire area. So, yeah. It's a bit harder to tell where rooms are because it's all just...
grey lines and you don't get the doors on them. So, you know, that's a bit more difficult, but... I don't know, I don't actually think that fills out as you explore. We can see there's a bunch of rooms over there which I haven't gone into. Do I want to? Not really. <sighs> I'd be lying if I said that these battles weren't getting a little bit repetitive. Join. Oh, I forgot to equip them. Aim. Aim. No. Hold on. What have you got equipped? Equipped your short bow. What do you have here? You must have swapped over to your dagger or something. You just stand around. Don't need to do anything really. Can I run this entire battle on quick mode? How would that go? Might actually want to focus on the mages if I do that. There we go. Yep. Okay, so not a fantastic tactic. Um... Okay, so you're awake, you're helpless, you're helpless. Just reload that. Uh, that's why it may kill the frequent saves. It's fun. It's unforgiving, though. Okay, load E. Uh, begin adventuring. E. Search. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, just go through there. You are entering the foul smelling, slime covered sewers of Tilverton. Because of the slippery footing and low ceiling, it is apparent that fighting will be awkward. Ooh, hey. What a different uh, appearance everywhere. Slimy walls. I'm guessing that map which we found is going to be coming into use now. Okay. You are still hearing you still hear the occasional sounds of battle echoing from the guild hall. Is that reference is that mentioning to me that I should probably go back and help them? I wonder whether that's like saying, hey, maybe you should turn around and like deal with them all. Hmm. I don't know. What, what do people think? Do you think I should turn around and go and uh, explore the entirety of the guild just to make sure that there's no like boss there which I have to defeat? Or should we continue on? Because I have no way of knowing one way or the other, since I haven't played through this game before. Uh, I could actually just look at the clue book, but... You know. 
I'd prefer not to do that. Hmm. It would be a lot easier if the random battles weren't going to be just all the time on top of you. Because it makes going anywhere kind of laborious. Where is those other ruins which I didn't explore? Hmm. I am going to save here under F's. Under F. And uh, we will. I'm going to go back and have a look. That message has made me kind of concerned that I should be turning around and doing things. Otherwise, people will be like, you know, hey, you left us when you should have helped us. And our party is made of, you know, good old people. I don't know whether the game's going to do something based on that, but, uh... Right, so let's see. Uh, we need to go. Bash the door. I think there is like a maximum number of fights you can have in a in a area. You hear howling from ahead. So you can like clear an area out of all the enemies. Um. That was something which we did in, new f in uh, Flan in Pool of Radiance. Areas had like set numbers of enemies and if you fought enough uh, random battles uh, you would end up eventually, you would eventually uh, run out of enemies in that area. You would have cleared the uh, area out. Uh, yeah, right there. I mean, by this point in the game, the uh, battle has been raging for several days. <laughs> As we've just camped in the middle of the mayhem to memorize spells and all that again. You know, as you do. It's fine. Everyone just put the battle on hold until we were ready. like I, I, are you do you want to fight right now it's like yeah oh, we're still a little tired They're like okay okay don't don't mind us just take your time uh asked magic missile cast it on you bam there we go ow No, doggies are running off. There we go. Oh. Okay, that didn't take too long. Uh, scampers. Take. Take. Oh. Okay. Camp, save, A, uh, E, and... Is there anything back here? You hear howling from ahead. Well, there's a, a bunch of dudes in this corner now. <laughs> They're right up against the wall too. Uh. I think just play it on auto because, you know. Not like there's any uh, tactics they're going to use against us. Then I'm going to have to like prepare for a 
They can't even flee because they've backed themselves into a corner. Here we go. Nope. Take Get some more arrows. Nope. Cool. Save. E. No. Exit. Bash down the door. There's actually nothing over there. There's a menagerie. <laughs> They're all pushed up against the walls. Okay. Um. Aim. No, the monkeys. Ow! Oh, careful, they're going to end up killing uh, Elspeth. Elspeth is dead. Okay. Reload. I wonder what it would be like playing this game with a bunch of characters which you created in this game. Like, I wonder if your characters get bumped up a few levels. Because this would be very <laughs> difficult. They're probably near impossible with a uh, bunch of level one characters. I have to assume you get levels. Uh, ooh, lying in a pool of blood is a young woman in a green robe. Near her is a broken staff, surmounted by a hand with a mouth for a palm and a piece of paper. Well, we didn't see that before. Actually, that sounds like woman in green robes, eyes of a fanatic, member of hand mouth group. I forget what god that was. Mulgar or something like that. The paper reads, keep watch on the chosen ones. Okay, so we're the chosen ones now. Paper on body red. Keep watch on the chosen ones. Here we go. Mm, okay, good thing I came back. Bash the door down. Actually, you can cast Bless, because pretty much everyone is out of melee. Ow. Look at this, we're actually getting a bless off on our people. It's incredible. There you go. Except for Balagar, but he's just gonna have to be surrounded by dogs to be happy. Uh 
fast asleep. Now. Cast matching missile on that dude because he's being rude and using ranged weapons. I'm actually gonna run you behind this wall, Will Smith. Uh, God. There we go, he's dead. campers take take the three arrows nope this room is littered with nord bones and leashes okay so i was going to go save e no fix go bash the door down go in here you have found the treasure room hey that was the room which we couldn't open before the party has found treasure each character receives 3,048 uh, 3, experience points. I guess since the guild seems to be getting killed, uh, we may as well take all the loot they've got. Uh, better us than anyone else. Uh, detect. Let's see whether they've got anything of value in here. Take. Items. Ooh, potions. Got three potions. Some dust. Iron stone deep red. Moo magic user scroll. Potion. Looks like a magic longsword and magic banded mail. And we'll pull the stuff and we'll share it out. Uh that what what I did there was uh we grabbed all the gold, including all, all the all the coins, gems, and jewelry, which you can see there, including our own stuff in our inventories, stuffed it into a massive pile, and then we distributed it evenly amongst all of us. Uh, you don't have to sort of pick up the gold uh, on the floor individually. You just have to, you know, pool it together and then share it out and it's split automatically amongst all your party members. So you don't have to worry about, uh, you know... Distributing the weight. It's uh, distributed evenly amongst everyone. So. There we go. The door is stout enough to hold against an attack. You could rest here safely. <laughs> okay. Not that I haven't been resting safely in other rooms. Uh, I guess the door's still stout enough considering we uh, broke the door down to get in here. That's what fix was. Uh, we've Fixed the door after we came in. Uh, yeah, memorize detect magic. Get stinking cloud again. Get fireball again. And get an ice storm again. Memorize. Magic, magic, magic missile. Asleep. And you can't memorize level 3 spell. Uh, rest. Rest. There we go. Good thing I went back, otherwise we would have missed that treasure room. Uh, save, E, no, 
and we'll turn around I guess now we'll go to the sewers um I'm actually going to look at the clue book just to make sure that we haven't missed anything of importance over here uh let's see <clears throat> okay if there's apparently two routes which we could take Yeah, the Guildmaster, Treasure Room, Dog Kennels, Monkey Cages. Exit the sewers. Okay, okay, so there's nothing else. Good. Uh, yeah, we'll just go the way we went. Yeah, you can see all these areas are actually completely empty now. Bash! And go through the door. Aha! Progress! We're entering the foul smelling slime covered sewers. Great. Ex exit. Save. E. No. Exit. How we go for time? Fine. We do like another 20 minutes or so. What's in here? Bash the door down. I wonder what we're going to find in here. Slimes. You still hear the occasional sound of battle echoing from the guild hall. I'm not going to be too worried about that. Now. A piece of paper pokes above the muck here. You record it in journal entry 41. Okay. I don't think I'm going to bring up the journal entries every single time we find something. Uh, let's see, 41. I'll just read it out. Uh, the paper is heavily soiled, but you can make out... Knives untrustworthy, cultists unreliable, wizard insane, and tea seems very dangerous. Expect little reliability from the new alliance, especially over the bonded subject. We will need we will need to set up our own observation team per Hmm. Okay, let's see. Uh Note found in sewers. Journal entry for 41. Okay, there we go. Am I going to explore the whole sewer? I can imagine it would be quite twisty. <laughs> Area, not here. Okay, so we can't use a map in here. <laughs> but we've got a map, so it doesn't matter. A tattered green rope lies trampled in the muck. Okay. Didn't we find someone with a robe in the previous room? You hear the shuffling of large feet, but can't locate the direction because of the echoes. Trolls? Don't know. Trolls? Would they be in a sewer? Maybe? Stuffed in a crevice here are the slain bodies of two red-robed assassins. It would take something powerful to have lodged them so tightly. Okay. I have no fear. Bash the door down. You spot something flapping on the ceiling. To tell what it is, someone would need to climb up. Does anyone want to? Only a thief could succeed. Yes. Who will climb? Uh, scampers. The thief retrieves a swatch of swatch of cloth from a sealed trapdoor. The door was too well jammed to open. The scent of a tavern wafts down through the door. You recognize the cloth as being the same as the dress worn by the woman who disappeared from the bar. Oh, okay. So that's where they disappeared to, into the uh, sewers. Uh, let's go this way. You spot a checkpoint to the north. A checkpoint? You are, by, you are at a checkpoint. The fire knives demand you immediately surrender. Do you surrender? <laughs> no. Convenient <laughs> clue. Yes. 
Who knew that? Travelling through the sewers could be so informative. It's where all good adventures end up. I think. <laughs> Even though they probably wish they didn't. Let's cast Stinking Cloud. This is actually a very substantial sewer for... No, I can't cast it. Oh, we're too far away. Yep. Just abort it. Like... If our character is here, uh, you can only cast uh, Stinking Cloud one square away. So if I cast it here, it would affect these squares. But if my character was over here, and we cast Stinking Cloud one square away from here, we could cast it here and it would affect these squares. So it effectively goes an extra square if you cast it from... <laughs> cast it from directions from the left over to the right. But if you're casting from the top or from the uh, right, you know, you cast it one square here, it's going to affect these ones. Actually, I was just, I was, sorry, you didn't see that at all. I was doing that on OBS. If we were standing here and we cast it here, it would affect these squares. If we were standing here and cast it here, which is one square away again, that's the max distance, it would affect these squares. Being here, we can cast it here and it will affect these squares. I can't cast it up here. It's, uh, odd. Well, it's not odd, but it's a, it's a limitation of the how the spell is cast that you have to understand. Some directions are just not as uh, effective to cast a spell in, in as other ways. Gonna run? I think they're running. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Checkpoint, no! Get out of here. Yeah, they're reaching the edge of the map. Cool. We don't have to worry about them anymore. Nope. Uh, sure. What? did they have? Anything of value? Some arrows. Yeah, it doesn't look like anything else. Nope. You quickly hide their bodies. Okay, fine, you can pass. Yeah. <laughs> you drive a very persuasive argument. Uh, I think we will let you go through. The remains of a body is here. An arm is marked with defective versions of the sigils on your arms. Oh, okay. Rats, the size of large dogs, rush away at your approach. Oh good, we don't have to fight giant rats. Bash the door down. Not everything is trying to kill us. That's nice. Pieces of trolls lie strewn about here. What do you do? Move on. Watch the pieces. Burn them. I'm going to burn them. You quickly see the pieces into inactivity. That's the uh, smart option to do when presented with parts of seemingly dead trolls. You don't want them popping up and attacking you when you move over them. We might have gotten more experience points for killing them, but, uh, you know... We've kind of moved beyond trolls, they're just kind of a hassle. And they get three attacks per round, they're not anything to joke about. Especially not with our uh, weakened equipment. We'd be relying on our spells. And I don't actually have any fire spells uh, prepared. Oh, hmm. uh, we got fireball. That's a fire spell, I think. Is it? I was thinking more like burning hands or... Uh, like Melf's Acid Arrow or Flaming Arrow or something like that. Something a bit more precise than a fireball? I guess a fireball is precise if you want to hit the room. Oh! A terrible stench assaults your senses as you enter this room. From out of a particularly nasty pile comes a pack of Otyug. 
Hey, that's an enemy we haven't seen before. Ooh. They weren't in Pool of Radiance. Hey, they're gonna disease us. Otyug. Uh, yeah, I think I've only seen them in one other game. That was Borders Gate 2. You fight one right at the beginning of the game. It's like a mini boss. Uh, they are refuse eaters. Um, they basically eat filth. That's why they tend to live in sewers. Uh, they have tentacles with spikes on them, on their large, flat, leaf shaped uh, palm bits. Um, which I think they can transfer disease through that, or if they bite you, you know, because they just eat filth. Um, they have three stubby legs and a big mouth, as you can see from their image, or as you could see from their image. Uh, they got a lot of hit points. They got like 40 hit points each. We're quite a bit higher level than we were, than you would be in Baldur's Gate 2 at this time, so. Are you? Actually, come to think of it, you put start Baldur's Gate 2, you'd be about level 8 from playing Baldur's Gate 1. We're about the same level. And they're quite large too. I don't think they really should be a uh, single square in size. Um, I feel like they should be like four squares. Or maybe four squares is too big. I don't know. Anyway, they're neat. If kind of disgusting. Actually, what does the manual say about Otyugs? I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um. Avengers Journal. Hold on. Uh. Otyug. These scavengers have long tentacles that they use to scoop trash into their cavernous mouths. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. I think there's a more powerful version of Otyug, of an Otyug, which can actually talk. Uh, but I can't remember what the name of it is. I don't see them as having diseased anyone, so that's good. I would like if they could stop hitting me, please. Probably can't make them sleep. Nope, they're too powerful. Uh, there we go. Aim. Jeez, stop picking on Arala. Poor girl. No, oh, they're running. They're just phasing out of existence. There we go. Nope. The party's won. 850 experience points. Um. I don't think they dropped any loot. So, yeah. With the monsters defeated, this looks like a safe place to rest. Great. Uh, let me just check if Rana's not, like, diseased or anything like that. Status is okay. Okay, cool. Uh, fix. And we will rest up and uh, memorize our spells again. I'm actually going to memorize some more magic missiles. A stinking cloud and a fireball. In case we come across any more, magic missiles seem to be a pretty good way to deal with them. Come on. Oh. Uh, fireball. Oh, it actually remembered the spells I was having memorized. Nice. Nope. Okay. 
out of here. You see a scrap of purple cloth clinging to the bottom of the south door hinge. Okay, that doesn't mean much to me. I don't remember anyone with purple robes on. Okay. Oh, I see how this how they're doing this longer dungeon. They just teleport you over to another section of it. Uh, how does the wiki actually describe what Yugs? Oh, it's actually at Yugs, apparently. Uh, they've been around since first edition. They are an aberration. Their alignment is neutral. They're di they're om they're omnivorous. Apparently, more recent versions have got four legs. Am I seeing that correctly? Or well, no, maybe they've, they've got one back leg. They've got two front legs. Yeah, three three legs. That hasn't changed. Um, though they've sort of become more. They used to be more like an orb with a mouth on it and the tentacles, whereas now they've become more like a. They've gotten more elongated. They kind of look a bit more like a hippo in shape. Uh, strange looking creatures with bloated oval shaped bodies. Yeah, that's changed. In this, they're more sort of a rounded shape. Around eight feet wide that stood on three shuffling elephantine legs and had a disgusting rock-like hide. They had a pair of long tentacles that were bedecked in rough thorny growths and ended in leaf-shaped pads bearing rows of more sharp spikes. A third tentacle sprouted from the top of the Atyog's body, forming a vine-like stalk, standing some two feet, 61 centimeters, high, and ended in a pair of eyes and an olfactory organ. A nose. The body of the creature contained a massive fang-filled mouth, shaped like a crude gash through its center. A typical Atyog was around 500 pounds in mass, 230 kilograms. Uh... <clears throat> Let's see, there's a Neo Atyug, which is probably the one I was thinking of, which is the ones which are smart enough to actually, like, talk to people. It says they're a type of Golgothra. What's that? Oh, a dung eater. Type of aberration. They were known as Golgothras in the realm were Atyugs and Neo Atyugs. That's the only type. Okay. Apparently it's a telepathic. <coughs> Though probably only the Neo Atugs. I think the uh, normal ones are not smart enough for that. Okay. Bashed it all down. Bash. I'll search one of these rooms if I get a message about, like, you know, this room looks like it's had recent use or something. But if it's just a random room, I don't think there'll be anything valuable in it. I mean, I could try, but, you know. I think the game usually points out if there's something of potential value in the area. Hey, more Atugs. Piles of excrement have been shaped into pyramids here. Many Atyugs are smoothing the sides and making artistic embellishments. A giant, a glint of metal comes from one pile. What do you do? Attack, bargain, flee. Uh, bargain? A telepathic buzz fills your mind. Oh, apparently they are telepathic. Hold on, let me check that. <laughs> oh, I mean, it doesn't really mention that. It just says that they're, uh... Neutral iron thought they would just be like a creature. Maybe this is a Neo Atyug. Telepathic buzz fills your mind. If you wish the shiny thing, then we must have treasure in return. To the south are others of our ilk who have two fine smelling piles of food. Bring us those. Um, are we going to have to carry it? Can we get a bag or something? I don't really want to touch it myself. <laughs> uh. Oh, 
I mean, I could just kill you, but you're neutral when you're, you know, being reasonable, so sure. I'll go bring you disgusting piles of filth. Oh, hello again. Where are the treasures you have promised us? You may not pass through this room without the food. Okay, I'll retreat. <laughs> I was going to just go through. I have to go all the way around now. Do I? Okay. Stay in here? Here we go. The room is filled with filth, though most of the smell comes from two piles near the center. The Atyog attack immediately. Oh, well, okay. We don't have to uh, bargain with them for their pile of filth. <laughs> you know, in the last game, we were defeating dragons and like clearing out a uh, clearing out a city and doing all this good work. Now we're like essentially trading sewage amongst uh, Atyugs. <laughs> I like that they've got them. They're not a monster you see too often. So, hey, I'm happy. As we're wading through, you know, liquid sewage. Oh, there's a Neo Atyog. Maybe we automatically uh, go into combat with them. Yeah, he's a big bugger. 72 hit points. Wow. Tasty, tasty filth. Ugh. Who am I to judge? I mean, they're probably rather heavily designed in sewers. They'd be keeping the uh, quantities of filth down. You know, it's like having a uh, automatic composting system. Uh, target there. Really? Only two? I must have made the saving throws. Wham! 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 Ow! Oh, three hits! Boo! Uh, cast. Magic missile. Let's uh, get let's hit let's hit ourselves. Uh. Gonna have to reload this, aren't I? Um. Yeah, I don't know if Stinking Cloud would work against them, considering they tend to live amongst sewage. And they're too far away for me to use it on them anyway. Let's see. Apparently it does. I would have thought they would, immune, they would be immune to it, but uh, what do I know? And Volkmar's dying. What? I mean, I suppose they've got a nose. Maybe Stinking Cloud just smells that bad. Let's reload that. <clears throat> okay. Play. Uh, I think the demo there is just like an auto battle or something which goes off. Might actually have to do a fair bit. <laughs> I don't know if I saved uh, too recently. Oh, it's fine. It's after the battle. That's fine. Yep. Oh, and the map doesn't reset, so... But that's fine. We can just, uh... You know, go back to where we were. There's not that many fights here. That's, you know, it's easy. Hello! No, I didn't want to... Wow, that's a... Wow! Did you see that? That was like an entire, like, room full of neo -atugs. Oh, you can see it's still on the map. The map's still up because it's, uh, it sort of froze on the last frame it had. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven... Eight Neo Atugs. Like twelve normal Atugs. That's uh That's quite the battle. 
that's what I was saying. In Borders Gate 1, you fight... In Borders Gate 2, you fight one. Uh, though you are... Do you have worse gear in that? I guess so. You might have some, like, a magic item. I don't know. It's also... You tend to be around, like, level 1 at that point, so... Or whatever. Hello again. Bargain. Agree. Okay, let's go through. What's over here? I could reset the map, um, but if I reset the map, the whole map would be reset. So, it's just easier to, you know, do it this way. How dare those other Atyug have a more glorious pile of filth than we do? Cast. Fireball. Cast. Fireball. Blech. Like they stick their tongues out when they attack. Uh, yeah, target them. Bam! 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 Uh, center, center, there we go. Target. <laughs> Cast. Magic missile. Come on. Oh, it's fleeing. <laughs> okay. Boo, actually. We don't get the experience for killing it. Whatever. 1,110 experience points. And there's no loot. It is obvious which piles the other Atyug wanted. Though unpleasant, you believe you can carry them back to the other Atyugs. Do you want to? <laughs> no, but yes. With the monster defeated, this looks like a safe place to rest. Though disgusting and smelly. Okay, I guess we've got the filth in our inventory. Hey buddies, couldn't they carry it? They're probably better suited for it. The Atyug bounce about in apparent joy of your gift. They pluck the object from the fetid pyramid and toss it to you. Then relieve you of your unpleasant baggage of trash. You may pass through fre freely. The object is a glittering piece of jewellery, ornately sculpted in the symbol of the Zentrim. The object looks to have been worn until recently. You were given a few other trinkets as well. Ah, oh, well, thank you very much. Uh, take. Five gems, two jewellery. Uh, sure, we'll take that, and we'll take the, uh, jewellery. Okay. it. Pleasure doing business with you. No, not really. Actually, I lie. It was thoroughly disgusting. <laughs> but, uh, hey. Uh, sure, bash the door down. Anything in here? No. Okay. Save again. I like that, though. You know, we went to the effort to talk to them and then we were able to do it. Burnt into the wall here is the symbol of a hand with a mouth for a palm. The faint stench of decayed flesh seems to hang here. Oh, lovely. Let's go inside. The room is swampy, and you sink down to your knees. Ew. Some trolls are sitting on a small tussock, tossing hunks of meat to the willowing to the wallowing crocodiles. They turn to you, another pile of meat, and so soon. Oh wow! Hey, the uh, I think the trolls have actually had an updated model since the uh, previous game. I don't remember them looking with their arms above their heads like that. I always like these sort of really gangly trolls. Uh, they got like a big nose and warts all over them and so on. Sort of like a really wiry, um, wiry strength. 
The ones in Baldur's Gate 2 look like that, except they're all sort of hunched over and folded up on themselves. It looks really creepy to me. Wait, what? The crocodile attacked me through 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 the through the uh trolls? That's not good. I don't have any magic missile. I don't have any fireballs. Uh Right, yes. Okay, so let's see. The way trolls worked in uh Pool of Radiance was trolls do resurrect uh if you kill them without dealing fire damage to them. Um, however, their body doesn't appear on the ground. Uh, so often the trolls wouldn't come back because another creature had stepped onto the square where the troll was, and that would stop the troll from resurrecting. It was actually a rather useful way to, uh, deal with them over time because you would be, uh, entice other creatures to step onto the square where the trolls were. And that troll would stop being a problem. Might have to reload this, because, uh... I think I need some fireballs! Especially to deal with these crocodiles! <laughs> He's stuck. We've got one fireball. I guess we'll cast it. Uh... Manual. I mean, that is a lot of crocodiles. I don't want to be dealing with that. I like the sprites for the enemies in this game. My favourite one's probably the giant frog from Pool of Radiance. It's just got such a... I really like its expression. It's just sort of staring at you, it's like, ugh. Okay, if we stand on that square where the troll died, uh, that troll shouldn't be able to resurrect now, unless it changed in Pool of Radiance. That is a possibility. <laughs> Uh, if, whether it, uh, unless that changed in Curse of Azure bonds I mean not a pool of radiance get rid of the uh, crocodile Ugh! trolls ow they hurt uh Take a step forward. Cast Stinking Cloud. Okay. Uh. Maybe another crocodile will hop into that square. There we go. Do I want to cast Ice Storm? Yeah, I think so. Uh, let's not, you know, beat around a bush too much. The trolls hurt. As I said, they hit like three times in a row. Okay, good. Uh, you stand there, and you can cast Magic Missile. That's 12 points. Dead. Okay. Done. Once the battle is over, it's fine. Uh, you know, they're all dead. I suppose you can imagine you just light them on fire with a torch or something. 790 experience, and we get no loot for that. With the monsters defeated, this looks like a safe place to rest. Good. <laughs> I kind of need it. E. No. <clears throat> uh. Fix. Fix. Magic. Falkmar doesn't have anything. Egrim. Magic Missile. Stinking Cloud. Fireball. Fire, fireball, fireball, ice storm. 
Yes. Elspeth. Uh, magic, magic, magic. Fireball. Yep. And rest. There we go. Save. E. Nope. Exit. Okay. Is there anything else around here? No. Okay. Oh, hey, more trolls. As you open the door, hands reach down from above, then comes a deep bass voice. Wait, you're not bone grinder, but you'll probably taste better. Kind of surprised the trolls can talk at all. Thought they weren't really smart enough to be able to do so, but... Eh. Um... Yeah, you move to here. Cast Stinking Cloud. Um... It doesn't matter whether the head of the uh, sprite is in the stinking cloud or not. Uh, as long as part of the model is in the stinking cloud, they will have to take a check. Good. Step on the square. Uh, cast a magic missile. Uh, focus on this one. One of the toughest early battles in Pool of Radiance is a battle which takes part against I think like four trolls and maybe two ogres and it's in a very small room um, which is actually to your benefit because they're so large they can't get past each other so it's sort of a battle which teaches you how to uh, like deal with enemies in such a way that you're not overwhelmed. You know, you like have one of the trolls fall unconscious or like put the ogre to sleep and then only one of the other trolls could attack you at a time. Even that's still pretty dangerous because the trolls do hit multiple times and uh, they're able to cleave off a lot of hit points pretty quickly. Okay, uh, you can stand there. I think I moved you off the square where the other troll was. But that's fine. We can kill this one in one hit and uh, combat should be over. Be nice if there's a little indicator where the trolls were, but uh, oh well. Oh, there's actually loot here. Uh, money. What have we got? 200 platinum, three gems and one jewelry. Uh, sure. Uh, exit. Pool and share. And, uh, Take. Braces. Girdle. Iron stone pink and green. Flail and a stuff sling. Uh, detect magic. What are they? Ooh, they're all magical. Sure, I take them all. With the monsters defeated. Yep, yep. Okay. Uh, fix. Go. And memorize again. There we go. I'm getting into the swing of the uh, keyboard presses. It's getting faster every time. Okay, what's up here? Oh, that's safe. That's the door to the uh, previous section. Okay. You hear a sound, suddenly cut off to the south and west. Okay. That's a... Uh... I'm, be I'm being thorough, I'm going to map out this entire area. Hmm. 
Apparently there's a door there, but I can't find it. Ooh, we found a secret door. You entered a hidden chambers. <laughs> Our uh, map here. Giving us some tips which we probably should be able to find. Welcome to the secret training hall of the guild. Would you like, would you care to train? <laughs> oh, uh, yes, sure. How, uh, advantageous. Uh, sure, Volkmar. Uh, you can train? 51 hit points. Training costs a thousand GP. Should be able to, we should have that. Do I not have that? I guess we have to pull out gold. Uh. Sure, did you have enough? Hold on. What's the uh, denominations uh, breakdown for currency? I'm probably using the wrong words there. Sorry. How much does a, a gold piece break down to? I thought it was a uh, hundred, just a hundred every time. Apparently not. Uh, here we go. Uh, one platinum piece equals five gold pieces, not a hundred. Okay, fine. That makes more sense. So that would be like 500. Yeah, okay. Uh, exit. Irala. You. You've got platinum. Trade. Trade to Volkma. Platinum. 100. There we go. Folkmar. Train. Will become a level 8 cleric. Yes. Congratulations. He got three levels. That. Hmm. He got three hit points. Or did he get two? Because it went from 51 to 53. That's not really enough. I don't think I'm happy with that. Uh, we're going to. Reload. As I said, I would like a few more hit points than just, uh, like two. He is still a front, front, front line fighter, so. I'm not going to worry too much about, uh, you know, getting as max as getting as much as he can, um, as much as possible. I don't even know how many he could get at max, but uh... okay. So let's see. That was over here. Yep. Okay. So in camp, save e no there. Search. Turn around. Back. Okay, into the hidden chambers. Yes, Rala, you trade to Volkmar, Platinum, 100, there, exit, exit, Volkmar, train, yes, 57, much better, I will accept that. Save current game, E. Okay, Egrim. Uh, gonna have to transfer platinum to you as well. Trade to Egrim. 100. There we go. I wonder whether I should level up my characters. I mean, what? We're going to spend the gold. I don't know if there's any shops which sell magical items or not. In Pool of Radius, there wasn't. You always found your items in the field. Uh, currency conversion was weird. Silver was 10 coppers. Electrum, electrum, uh, electrum jumped all the way up to 50 coppers. Gold 100 and platinum 1000. Yeah, let's see. The manual says uh, one platinum piece equals five gold pieces equals 10 electrum pieces equals 100 silver pieces equals 1000 copper pieces. So yeah. Wow. 
but it's just like I like that it's an interesting like breakdown system, but uh kind of maybe a bit needlessly um complicated. I mean I suppose you could see it as like platinum pieces. Oh, they're going to be the ones which are used by like nobles and royalty because only they're going to be dealing with such large quantities of of uh money. But even gold is like the average person's got like gold coins in their pocket. Um, copper would make more sense, but you don't really buy things for a few coppers unless it's like rope. Or a ladder. A sword costs, you know, a few gold pieces. A anyway. I don't know. I suppose it makes sense. It's just... Um, yeah, level 8 magic user. Yes. Okay. And we have to choose a spell. Uh, what do you get? Dimension door. Fear. Fire shield. Fumble. I I learn fear. I mean, would that be useful? It would make every enemies run. That would mean I have to chase them down, but it would get them off of our back. Sure, learn fear. Uh, and I think you got, like... One hit point. Something like that. Adventurous inflating the economy. Yeah. <laughs> What? Because we lost all of our gold for last time, we've got like several piles of platinum and magical items which are just added into the economy of the region. Oh, jeez. Dragons are actually a, an important function of that because they uh, induce scarcity of gold. And magic items too. It's not my fault that, like, a long sword plus one sells for about a thousand gold pieces. I rather like that they sell for a lot. I don't know, anyway. <laughs> it's silly, but... Uh, it makes them feel more special. Instead of just like, you know, oh, it's a sword plus one, I sell it for, like, 30 gold pieces or something. I forget how much they sell for, like, sell for in, like, Neverwinter Nights. Probably like 125 gold pieces for a longsword plus one or something. But then like you buy it from a shopkeeper and it's like a, you know, it's like 800 or something. You're getting basically piddly for selling things in, in uh, RPGs. <laughs> getting ripped off the whole time. <laughs> um, Train. Yay! Uh, and we'll learn Ice Storm. 23. Whatever. You're the mages. I don't particularly care about your hit points. Save. Yes. We're staying with that. No, I don't want to quit the DOS. Just search around this area to find us again. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> How convenient that there's a training hall down here. I do hope I run into more, uh... Otyug's willing to trade filth for... points. <laughs> I'm running a bit lower money now, I think. <clears throat> Next is going to be a shop down here. Here lies the slaughtered remains of a fire knife checkpoint. As you cautiously look it over, a man steps out of the shadows. He holds a sword and wears the livery of the Knights of Mithrada. You bear blue tattoos marking you bear blue tattoo markings of the fire knives, yet I have heard rumors that the accursed flamed ones flamed one was using such things to control people. To whom do you own allegiance? Fire knives. Prince Nakahia. No one. <laughs> um Well, definitely not the fire knives. Kind of no one, because we're adventurers? I mean, what? We were looking for finding Princess Nicacia. Or Cormia, I think it was? Hold on, let me read the, uh... 
journal to see why we were doing that again. Uh, rumor was that King Aswin's youngest daughter, the Princess Nicasia, ran away from the royal household of Cormia almost a year ago. She fled an arranged marriage and ran off with a cleric from Tilverton named Gary of Gond. The latest word was that Nicasia and Gary had a falling out and that she was seen near Tilverton recently. The king had a large reward out for Nicasia's return. Yeah, it doesn't seem like that's something we'd want to say we're in allegiance to, because, uh, what, this area is seemingly having a bit of trouble with Cormia? And Mithdrana is, uh, not part of Cormia. Mithdrana is, um, well, yeah, <laughs> Mithdrana is to the, uh, north east of us. I'm gonna say no one. No one. For a small city sewer, this place teems with activity. If you're heading to the for the hideout, don't kill the cleric with the hammer. He's with me. He lets you pass. <laughs> yeah, there's an awful lot of people in here. Uh have you seen the monkeys? It's like monkeys all over the place in here. And dogs. Don't kill the cleric with the hammer. <laughs> okay. That really narrows it down. <laughs> Uh, uh, F. I mean, could he be wielding anything else other than a hammer? A mace, I suppose. A club. I mean, who uses clubs? Aside from, like, druids. But even then, I think druids would be better served using, like, a corner staff or something. Nope. The Fire Knife Hideout. You are entering the hideout. There are signs that this is normally a checkpoint, but it has been hurriedly abandoned. Uh, let's go back. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, because I want to clear out the other rooms around here. Bash the door down. Nothing in there. There's actually a door over here. There's apparently a door back there. Bash the door down. It's nice going into an area where you're not having battles every step. Oh, uh. Yeah, secret door. You went into hidden chambers. No, I don't want to train. Sure. What's down here? Bash the door down. This whole area is the secret training halls, is it? Okay. You found a secret door to the south. You are entering the hideout. Apparently we've found a secret entrance into the, uh... The hideout is strangely quiet for such a normally active place. You are spotted by a fine art patrol who charge immediately. I guess most of them are busy, uh, fighting the guild. Or what's left of them. They didn't seem to be much opposition. Uh, use stinking cloud. I keep seeing them as being like robed old men, like they've got, you know, grey uh, beards and hair. I think it's supposed to be like a face mask. You know, like a ninja hood or something. Uh, magic missile. No. Ow. Oh, actually, you don't have, uh, your arrows. Right. 
Uh, yep. Yeah. Ready them. Game. Deal with him. Good. And good. Okay. Excellent. Nope. 558 experience. Did I have anything of value? I got arrows. Uh, scampers. Take the arrows again. Take. 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 Yep. There we go. Exit. Nope. <coughs> e. Now we're going for time. Wow. Okay. We've actually nearly gone on for an extra hour. I get lost in it. Um. But somewhere nearby, you hear a panicked voice. I went to get Kaibor to interrogate the prisoner. His whole place was incinerated. This place must be cursed. Okay. So yeah, I think we'll actually leave it there. Uh. <laughs> before we go on any longer. Oh boy. That's a, uh. That's quite the uh, first session of this. Makes up for all the talking and backstory and faffing about we did at the beginning. Ugh. I suppose I was trying to get through all the sewer stuff, but uh, it, it just keeps going. Ugh. Yeah, interesting so far. A lot of combat. I suppose that's, you know, to be uh, expected. Uh, but it's neat that it's playing out quite differently from uh, Pool of Radiance. Pool of Radiance, you started off, and it was a lot of... You, you went around town, you read the uh, a wall of proclamations, and you sort of got your quest from that, and then you went out into the town to explore, fight monsters, and, uh, you know, sort of hunt around for the areas where you'd be completing those quests, whereas this one is sort of... Action! Go through these... Go through this uh, guild hall. Go through these sewers. And uh, so on. I'm guessing it's going to open up more later on. Uh, because, well, I guess there would be... I, I'm going to say that there's a uh, overworld map like there was in Pool of Radiance, which we can travel around to different locations. But, uh, yeah, we have to get through all this at the beginning. And uh, we've got items which are going to have to identify too. I think you could just get that done at a shop. So... We'll also have some gems and uh, jewellery to appraise when we get there as well. I wonder what these gems are we found, because we got... Didn't I get some, like... Yeah, these. Ion Stone Deep Red. Don't know what those are. Does the manual say what they are? Items. I have them listed here anywhere? I don't know what that first bit there is. I-O-U-N. Is that an abbreviation or... Uh... Yeah, I'm not seeing anything from a short look through the uh, manuals and all that. So I guess we're going to have to find out. If I really don't know what they are, I'll just look it up through, like, looking through a walkthrough or something like that. Uh, but yeah, um, we did save before. 
I'm gonna li I'm not gonna save again so that we can get that dialogue again next time. And uh, we'll continue with this next time. It's quite a bit of progress. I'm. I don't know. I guess I'll. Um, devote like longer streams to this. Last time I was doing like two hour streams, which you know, is how I usually like to do things. But because RPGs can take longer to get into things and uh, sort of get things done, maybe I'll do longer streams of it. That might work. I might, if that's the case, I might split this up and do other things every now and then. Just so that we're not doing, you know, long epic RPG the whole time. Um, because they are quite involved, and uh, it can be a lot of, you know, repetitive combat and so on. So I'll put some variety in there, also for my own benefit. I do like these, but, uh, you know, I'm not really one, I suppose, for, like, marathoning something. <laughs> anyway, we'll see how I feel. That, that's all dependent on me. Yeah, well, we saved it there, and we'll continue with this next time. Thank you very much for joining. I hope you join me again then.